And my thought was, I was like, you know what? This is kind of fun. I'm getting to see a game that's not out for a really long time. Nobody even knows this thing exists. And I and I start loading it up, and I look at it, and I'm like, oh, this is bad. Okay. <laughs> like, this is really bad. And, and, and I'm like, well, why do I feel that way? And immediately, I'm like, well, you know why I'm able to identify these bad things that are helpful and actionable is because my concern as a streamer is I need things to look and feel good to a viewer. And so if I load in, into a game and there's some stupid looking gun, everybody in chat's gonna gonna identify that gun. Yep. They're not gonna see the really cool mountain off in the distance that they were supposed to see. They're gonna see the gun. Right. And they're gonna mock it because that's what we do. Right. The following is a conversation between myself and the best Jared, or he's now changed his name to Jared R. Bear. Uh, Jared's a great guy. He's one of the few people on Twitch, who I respect and who I would love to meet in real life because I think he's a cool guy. He's lived a very interesting life. Uh, he's a hard worker and he has a lot of respectable qualities. So with that, I hope you enjoy the conversation. Uh, Jared, I want to call you, I want to call you the best Jared, but I can't. I changed it. You changed it. Finally, I'm free, dude. Yeah. Um, it was uh, it was a it was a horrible jail sentence I put myself under. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like that name. Uh, you know what? So okay. So I mean, okay. So that name, right? Mm -hmm. uh, funny thing about it. <clears throat> the, so you're the, you're the second person I ever followed on Twitch, right? Like I've told you that mm -hmm. you're you're number mm -hmm. two. Like out of all time, you're the second person I ever followed. Who's the number first one? Person I ever, my brother. All oh, right. Yeah, I remember that so too. My yeah. brother's streaming, right? And I want to chat in his stream. Mm -hmm. And so, like, they're, you know, like, memes come and go, right? Like, memes memes are, they, they have a shelf life of approximately 30 minutes. And so <clears throat> there's this stupid meme that was, like, really funny at the moment. And I was like, I'm going to do something funny. And I named myself the best Jared because that was part of the meme. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so I go into his chat and we have, like, a, like you know, a 30-second laugh about it. And I had no idea that... I don't know, man. I stuck with the name. I just, you know, it was kind of one of those things where I was like, I started, I streamed Titanfall a few times and yeah. got a few followers and my friends followed my account. And, I, and then by the time that I was like, okay, I'm going to stream for real, right? Mm -hmm. I already, I, I don't know. I didn't want to restart with those like 20 followers. <laughs> so I was like, it's fine. I'll just keep it. Just keep it. And then, you know, I probably shouldn't have kept it. It's, well, uh, and, and it's gone now and it's good and it's gone for a lot of really good reasons. So, well, I thought it was cute. I liked it. It's, it's a, really sweet. It's Thank a cute, you. it's a cute name, but why didn't you, <laughs> now you're, you're, fuck, I had to look it up actually. I know. I Jared know. R. Bear. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. That's, that's it. Okay. So you just wanted your name instead of Make your the, yes. Come true. the child yes. version and a lot of, of that it. Is, a lot of that is because of Do what, it. like, I'm, you know, I'm doing in, in life. Now. Uh, these days, all of the, all of the other jobs that I do, uh, that are kind of in, I don't know, they're all industry connected. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. but the problem is like the last straw for me <clears throat> was I, you know, I work with all these people. I do all these, I'm sure we'll talk about all the stuff I'm doing now. I'm, I'm doing consultations. I'm yeah, doing, we'll, we'll go uh, I'm doing writing in, stuff, in I'm order. doing all this crap. And somebody that I've worked with, I went to his stream and I said, hi. And, and he, he like met me for the first time again. And I was like, oh, oh, that's probably not good for work. Because of the name like, change. Yeah. Well, no, he didn't know me as the best Jared. He knew me as Jared Bear. Oh. And, and because I go by that in every other in every other thing that I do. And that's because there's just this awkwardness. Like, like you know, picture two, two dudes in suits talking, like, talking about who they want to do a job. And one guy fumbles through going, da-da, 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 da da best Jared. <laughs> And I'm, it's like, I was like, oh, that's kind of cringy, dude. So, so, you know, I, we, I finally pulled the trigger and fortunately I kind of have been going by that everywhere for, you know, off and on for a year. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, but like, I mean, half, half of my guys are still that have been in half of my viewers that are still in, that have been in chat for like a week and they've been talking to me in chat, just noticed like, you know, today or yesterday. So it's mm -hmm. like, they just, you know, kind of went under the radar and that's nice. That's nice. So, well, well, there's two questions with that before, before we go further. Um, the first question would be, why, why you're, why like a, uh, do you, 
This is a hard question. <laughs> it's a very hard question. I'm, I'm realizing it's a hard question to ask. You know, I'll save it. Have you experienced any trouble transitioning from your name? Like, are you losing followers? Are you... Zero, zero, Nothing. absolutely zero, no confusion whatsoever. And that was the big thing is like, you know, I sat down with my manager and we discussed it for a while. Mm. I, and, and the truth be told, I've been after just, I've been after Jared for two years um, and communicating with Twitch over it. Like uh, finally, I finally got like the absolute no, because like the deal with, I don't know if you know this, I didn't know this. Um, and this totally makes sense, but partner names, mm -hmm. And staff names never get rotated. Oh. And that makes sense, right? Because what if you changed your name and then I maliciously, two years from now, make a Faraz Khan account, right? Right. And then I go and and uh, and and besmirch your uh, <laughs> like, My good it, name. It just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, and so I, you know, I knew that about I kind of suspected that about partners, but I didn't realize it's staff also. And some fool Oh, like no. nine years ago was named Jared. Yeah. And I've been after that guy. I've been after that name. And finally I pieced it together. And so I was like, okay, so I can't do that. So he doesn't work for Twitch anymore or no, he's long gone. He's he, gone. He's, the name's just he's gone. That sucks. It's just, it's yeah. So I was like, okay, well I can't be that. Right. Right. And so I've gone by Jared bear for a long time. And then I sneakily stuck in my middle initial at some point because mm -hmm. it sounds, I don't know, man. It like, it sounds it sounds professional. Oh, are you going to that business that business meeting with Jared R. Bear? With Jared R. Bear. Like, like that sounds way cooler than Is it Ralph? Oh. Jared Ralph Bear? That's... No, 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 no. It's uh I'm I'm not telling anyone. Fair enough. Because I told them that I'm not gonna tell them until I have five hundred non gift, non prime subs. That's that's the interesting thing. Like um it's it's not Robert. Right. It's not Robert. It's not Ralph. Could be Randall. It's not Rodriguez. Uh. <laughs> it's not Randy. That's too bad. I know. Yeah. I think, I, I, you know what? I'm going to be honest. I don't actually know what that word means, but I know to British people, I think, I think it means horny. It does. I'm yeah. Guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. Um, so how long has it been since we talked? Also, what are you drinking? Dude, it's seriously been, I'm drinking gamer vitamins. I'm a gamer, dude. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Orange flavor. Orange. It's, it's, it's orange. It's very, very good. I got it from Costco and it's cheap. And, um, do you know what vitamins you know, are actually in there? It's yeah, it's got, it actually like I had, okay. You know how you like, you know how you have people in your life mm -hmm. and I don't think you're <laughs> one of these people, but some people who are like, I, I know you have people in your life. I mean, people specific, yeah. specific type of person who's like, not just healthy, but like, they're like obsessive, right? Like, like they'll look at a label and they'll see something and they'll be all, well, that, that ingredient is second cousins of cyanide. You need to kick that cyanide. out of your life. <laughs> okay. Like, well, so, so, you know, I have one of those guys in my life yeah. and, uh, and he looked at it and he was like, okay, this is actually pretty good for this stuff, dude. So I'm like, okay, that gets the approval. So I, now I feel good about saving money and that I'm not dying. So that's neat, right? Mm -hmm. It's working. You're looking buff. Thank you. Uh, most of it's fat, but I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, sure. That's that's what fat looks like usually. It makes I, you look buff, yeah. I know. It's real there's there's this happy medium where like you start getting just a little lazy and your body responds in a really nice way, and then uh -huh. if you allow it to go too far, all of a sudden you go shit. The dad bod. You're yeah, on the, I, you the, know, the cusp of the the other end of the dad bod. Yeah, and I don't you know, I don't want to go further, but uh I, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm trying. Yeah, you're doing good. I, I think you. you said you started working out. Actually, uh, last uh, yeah, time I remember I, you, know, you were wearing jorts, and then you had a a cut from the jorts, and you're like, I have to stop on my, working on out. On my belly, that that is that was, was. <laughs> that was that was really unfortunate. Yeah. Um, the 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 wound. Yeah. Did it but, heal uh, up? Yeah, you know, it's it's gone. There's no scar. I'm very. Uh, we're we're we're. We're looking good. We can run now. It's just great. But uh, yeah, no, I'm kind of working out a little bit uh, off and on. I, It's so hard, man. I'm so like, I keep myself so freaking busy mm -hmm. that working out has become uh, a thing that like, I mean, I really have to sneak in. Like, I really got to like, I got to sneak them in, sneak them in. Mm -hmm. Like, like 10 minutes here, go like, go, go work out as hard as I can uh, to make that 10, those 10 minutes actually matter. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, maybe I don't get it the next day. And, and it's just, um, 
So, so you know, it's some. Sometimes I'll go a week without working out, and sometimes I'll work out, you know, every day for two weeks. But. Well, that's what I've noticed. I've noticed you've been very busy. You, you've always been doing things, and generally, when I when I look at Twitch, you're one of the people that is always working and really, really trying to make use of your time. So, it's been roughly. Has it been like a, it's been about a year since we talked? I seriously think it's been a year. About yeah, a, about like a I, year. Yes. And last I checked, you were just off, uh, well, we were talking about China, and you were considering, you know, because you didn't want to say anything, because you do want to go back there. Yeah. But yeah, you yeah, were yeah. on the precipice of, of, of making a decision there, and then I think I saw on Twitter, you're just like, no, fuck it, I'm going to say stuff about this. But... Yeah, I got really tired. I got really tired of the of, of self-censoring that for for the the potential. Like, I can do actual good and discuss a thing, mm-hmm. or I can potentially not discuss a thing, uh, achieve nothing, no, no good in that area, and then maybe get to go back someday. And it's like, well, I kind of like the definite one, right? Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like that just seems, uh, that seems, that seems wiser to me. Yes. Yeah. That's a good way to look at it. And then I saw, well, I've seen, I've seen, I have watched you on Twitter make a lot of different changes. So now your Twitter is, game dev twitter and nice things that you like in your surround rather than streamer twitter which i remember back yes. then was a big back and forth battle that never seemed to end yeah and and it's so funny i was talking to somebody recently about this like like this subject of like um so so i saw somebody in the midst of like the the turmoil that i remember when i first got involved in those cultures because you know you you know, mm. you know this when twitter as a streamer you you think hey what am i going to do oh i'm going to connect with other people who do the same thing i do mm-hmm. and uh, and that makes sense i understand that I, I i don't besmirch anybody for for thinking that way um but then um you know some people you look at that and they get really bothered because they see people uh being manipulative or they see people being mean or they see people wasting their time and that can really bother somebody as well um and and they just they just see the the churn right like mm-hmm, just this mm-hmm. it's these emotions and so i saw somebody the other day and it's funny you bring this up because it's i i had a conversation where i see this person and they're like i'm tired of this like i i just you know i i'm i i i'm tired of seeing these people and i want to do something about it and i want to call these people out for x and y and uh and i, and I was like you know what here's the deal dude mm-hmm you can do you can do that and it's fine and sometimes it's important when somebody's doing something stupid to just raise your hand in the room and say hey i i think that's stupid um and maybe even go further and say i think x is smart instead and um and and but then then i was like but here's the deal with with that environment and with you know a lot of environments um when you identify somebody or a cause or something that needs to be defeated, right? Like you can, I mean, that's kind of silly to say it that way, but you want to, you want to defeat this thing, this person, this ideal. Okay. Wait, wait, you, hold on. Cool. Before we continue further, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's yeah. Uh, give, give me some concrete. It doesn't have to be the situation no, no, itself, example, but give, uh, just so like we can, can follow you, it. I can give you an example. Uh, for example, uh, let's just say uh, I can even um, a while back, um, there was somebody who was doing, you know, paid stream coaching that was ineffective, right? Yep. And and people saw that and were like, hey, this is this actually isn't doing anything. And I got involved in that. And I'm like, hey, statistically, this is a waste of your time, yeah. waste of everybody's money. Uh, in the end, you know, this is going to sound stupid, but we won. That person's long gone. Mm-hmm. And you know what happened? Somebody else replaced him. Right. And so it's it's this thing where you spend time. Uh, you spend time investing and then you have to do it again and where sometimes it might socially make sense in your circles again to raise your hand and say x is wrong y is a waste of time why are you doing this do this instead uh the second you become a you know it's 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 kind of funny actually uh it kind of falls into the category of becoming a social justice warrior um it, it's the same actions and given like, you know, that, that term can be a very politically charged one. The, mm-hmm. the idea of I see X and these bad things and I'm going to attack them and waste or spend my time. Well, cool. You win and something else happens and you got to deal with that other thing as well now. And then you got to deal with the next one and the next one. And it's like, okay, when does it end? Mm-hmm. It, the answer is it doesn't. It doesn't end. And 
it never ends. And so at some point, if you want to remain a sane person, you got to go, okay, I'll take what I've learned. I'll, I'll add these, these helpful phrases and ideas for kind of a quick reference for when I need to address this issue or that issue. Uh, you know, I'm equipped. Uh, let's say hypothetically a situation comes up about stream coaching. I have a thing to say about it now, mm -hmm. but we don't need to defeat that dragon because then another one, uh, another one hatches. And, and, and it's just nice to take that equipping and move on and actually do something with your life. And I, and so I, I kind of, at, like for me mm -hmm. at that point, decided to, to stop wasting my time and, uh, and, you know, deal with things quickly, concisely. And, uh, and, and you say, you know, like my, my public presence has changed considerably in that area mm -hmm. and that that's why, and that's why I, I've shifted into, Hey, you know what? I really enjoy these things. I'm going to talk about them a lot and, uh, and, and be, be less involved in these other things. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'll, I'll tell you, it's, uh, it's made, it's made social media in general, a great joy for me, mm -hmm. uh, which is interesting because I think previously I would have associated, um, inappropriately associated, um, uh, like winning and dominance as joy and it's not um and so yeah i'm just uh, i'm dude it's fun like all that stuff's fun for me now i i can shit post i can post a picture of a minion uh i can i can i can do whatever the hell i want i can talk about a game i'm excited about um you express and, yourself and, yeah and 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 it's not you know it's just it's just much better and so yeah i i have changed considerably uh in those areas and it's not that i you know don't have thoughts on those things but mm -hmm. it's it's that i can express those more concisely and to to a purpose because i am so there there's i said this yesterday actually i think one of the biggest evils in the world is is wasting your time mm -hmm. now i that doesn't mean that that uh enjoyment pointless enjoyment is actually pointless i get the, i think people can relax and enjoy themselves mm -hmm. but uh like i think there's actually value in just being happy right mm -hmm. um like you don't actually have to accomplish things and i don't mean for it to sound that way but um specifically no I, I think i understand what you're saying yeah, like, like you don't like you don't want wanna... time thinking you're doing something when you're not yes is is sad and so i look at that and i go well i just don't want to do i don't i just don't want to waste my time i'd rather i'd rather you know do more with my life yeah so either, well I, I like that that's that's an interesting thing um because i i think you're right well social media is a tool uh, pretty much no matter what you what you look at what you do most things are tools and it depends on how you use them and there is yeah. a there's an there there is an interesting thing there where it's like okay well look i have this thing in front of me and i don't like it and i want to deal with it and i want to be in line with myself and stand up against it i want to you know cut off that hydra's head and then mm -hmm. you realize, of course, well, two heads grow back for every one that you cut off. It's just kind of the nature of the uh -huh. system. Um, and that's tough because it's like, well, okay, what am I doing? And there's a, there's a part of the system where it's like, as long as you're fighting, it doesn't matter which side you're on. Because you said like, you know, it's almost like a, the social justice behavior. It's like two sides yeah. of the same coin. As long uh -huh. as you're fighting, you are participating in the system, I would say, in a manner that is not in your benefit. Um, yes. Whereas, like, uh, for example, what you did later, which is, well, I'll use my example. So I have Instagram, and I don't know how to use Instagram at all. <laughs> uh, I, I have no idea. I don't know how to follow. I don't know how to unfollow. Um, but I opened it, and I just, I it gave you the initial, like, who to follow people, and I just followed a bunch of cal um. calisthenics people. So a bunch <laughs> of people that do, like, a bunch of muscle boys that do muscle-ups and yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, yeah. all these planch and stuff like that. So whenever I open Instagram now, that's all it is. It's just like uh, 10, 20 muscle boys working out and they'll occasionally teach you things or do tutorials and stuff like that. But there's, uh -huh. no, there's no drama. There's nothing. Whereas if and I... And it's fun. And it's fun. It's good. It's like, oh, enjoyable. And of course, I still have to say, okay, that's enough. I need to go do stuff. But then uh -huh. versus uh, other social media apps like Facebook or Twitter, I, I don't use Facebook anymore, but Twitter is there. It's just, it's the opposite. It's very unfun. It's very like, uh -huh. uh, and it's 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 tuned a different way. And I think I think Twitter, I could I could easily change it and just follow puppy accounts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But there there has to be a balance to it, which is well, it's a, is the tough. interesting thing. 
Yeah, the interesting thing about that platform in particular, right, is that it 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 really knows what you look at. Mm-hmm. And so you can't lie to it. And yeah. and so it's funny. I figured this out like cuz 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 you know, I said I use mine for fun now, right? Like games. I'm really really heavily involved in uh in specifically like classic shooters, right? Like yes. I I like games that look old and uh and and play fast. And and so, you know, I look at all the stuff and it goes, oh, you're looking at that stuff and it gives me more. Mm-hmm. But then let's say hypothetically uh, a drama post comes across my feed. Like Twitter knows if I open that. And that's what people don't understand is the platform. It's really stupid because it's just a social media platform, but it requires tending like a garden to keep it good. And that kind of sucks. I like that um, analogy, actually. I really like that. Yeah, yeah, because you see it's it's and it's not even just liking posts and retweeting. Like if you let's say there's this thing and there's this big dramatic first tweet and then you see 700 responses. Well, you're curious about those responses, aren't yeah. you? You click it and it knows you clicked it. And so I didn't like anything. I didn't respond to anything. But Twitter goes, OK. And so you it's you can't lie to Twitter. Mm hmm. You can't be like, oh, but I, you know, I don't want that stuff in my feed because it, it goes, oh, no, you do. You just won't admit you do, but you do. Mm-hmm. And and it forces that stuff down your feed. And so it's it does create this interesting scenario. And when I identified that, um, now I'm able to be like something comes across my feed and it's like, OK, I'm just scrolling. Like, because I know that it's going to in a, it's going to change something that I have learned to value uh, and enjoy a lot more. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the weird thing is 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 uh you know i could screw it up you could totally screw it up i could screw that thing up by by clicking on clicking on that post um and and you do and then all of a sudden your whole feed changes and and you've let that thorn grow in your garden and and uh yeah. and it's just it's like it's almost like okay is it worth it and the you know the answer is like if you enjoy it it's worth it uh but you got to you know again you got to keep it very you've very got to purposefully handle it and yeah uh, it's delicate yeah, and it shouldn't be because it's a it's a social media platform. That's silly. Well, that's that's the next question uh, here. Is that something that seems so simple and so easy to use and so accessible? And it's like you you know anybody can sign up for Twitter and write a tweet and tweet it out and retweet and stuff. You don't really need to have any special skill set or anything like that. But the the effects of your actions in this medium are can be so big it's almost it's almost dangerous like it, it now that the we're in the internet age the social media age and there's so many people advertising and so many there's there's so much bombardment of your your senses of of how 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 you can be influenced um it's completely new and i don't think it's intuitive for people using something for the first time, second time, or even 10th time to understand that analogy. Okay, look, this is actually a garden and I need to tend to it. Otherwise, my life will slowly become worse over a long period of time. Um, whereas um, it's almost like you you would almost exp- expect a disclaimer, like on a drug. Okay, if you are going to use this, you have to make sure you're very careful with what you pick and what you look at because that will influence what you see tomorrow and that will... Um, as research shows, influence your overall mood, your social circles, um, Mm -hmm. people's Mm -hmm. opinions of you, all sorts of things like that. It's like, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it actually is a big deal. Um, Oh yeah, absolutely. It's, and that's because, and, and this is in part because we are so easy to break, right? mm -hmm. Like, like I, as strong as, as strong as I like to think I am, the reality of it is, uh, is I am, this delicate chemical composition and and if uh, if you give me the right chemicals i do the right things and and mm-hmm. sometimes you know if or if i'm if my if my food is the wrong food for a long enough time or and 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 humans are so complicated that when you interact with things that are designed to affect our mood uh as silly as it is social media internet uh stuff like that it actually does have lasting effects and 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 it is unfortunate because those lasting effects um, are usually very negative. Um, I can't, I mean, it it takes, it takes, uh, a lot of very purposeful actions to make it positive. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, similar to working out or something, right? Like, like it's easy to get out of shape. It's hard to get 
in shape. Mm-hmm. And um, and so yeah, it is uh, it is a really interesting thing because I again you you don't see people you don't see people take uh, take breaks from food. Mm-hmm. You see, but you do see people all the time say, you know what, I just need to get off social media because we identify that it is gener- it can and usually is commonly bad. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it, it is a really interesting thing. Like it's and again, it's a it's an amazing tool. It can be, um, especially especially in uh, in like, say, for instance, depending on certain jobs and employment, like it's it has served me very, very well because of the social connections of it. And so I look at that and I'm like, okay, well, I have to, en- like, like, yeah, I kind of have to engage with it, uh, it in that. And so since I'm kind of forced to engage with it, um, I'd, I'd better take care in the way I engage with it, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Now, well, the question would be from there is, so social media is going to be a part of our lives for the foreseeable future. It obviously has a lot of effect and a lot of influence on us, like, like I, you said, I'm paraphrasing, but people generally uh, are on autopilot a lot of the time for a lot of the different things they do. And what dictates the actions they make under autopilot are incentive structures. So if you are incentivized, mm-hmm. you, you could be like driving, you know, you are incentivized not to crash into another car or to put your signal on because there are certain social rules of the road. Um that that will dictate your actions and some of the, well the majority of them are for good but some of them aren't great and that applies to all other spheres as well so with that social media as a tool i would say well there is potential for a lot of good there but the potential for bad is disproportionate in that it is it, it is far easier to do bad with social media than it is to do good um so i i, I would want to know your thoughts here if you could change social media at all, and we could just pick one platform or we could pick them all, Twitter, mm-hmm. Instagram, whatever it may be, Twitch even, Twitch could technically count as social media. Um, what would you change to make it better for people overall? Like what are they doing now that isn't working? And from there, how would you make that better? So, you know, that's really hard because like this this calls to mind like a conversation uh, I saw... Um, okay. So the founder of Reddit, right? Like, mm-hmm. like he, he back, back during the whole Elon buying Twitter thing, right? Like he had a conversation, uh, a, a public conversation. And he was like, he was, he was like, social media is really hard. Uh-huh. He, he was like, it's, it's, it's incredibly challenging because he's like the, the topic being like, you know, the controlling social media in general, what you limit, what you don't limit conversations, you prevent conversations you allow. Uh, and he was like, his whole thing was, it is so hard to run and maintain this stuff because it's human. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was like, he, he was like, we don't really have. Uh, he's like, there are individuals who have political slants, but we don't as a whole have that. We just want you guys to stop fighting, right? Yeah. Like, that's what he, was, he was like, because it takes man hours and that costs money. And he's like, and companies don't want to spend money. Right. And so, so he's like, as much as everybody feels wronged and slighted and and hurt over over you know this opinion or that opinion being limited he was like honestly we would just love to be hands off but you guys will kill each other and 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 it will cause actual issues and you'll have people you know uh doxing and you have like dangerous things taking place but then he's like but how do you limit stuff and it's like so i look at that and i'm like shoot man like with my like, like if I had the power to like to, you know, modify any sort of social media, mm-hmm. I don't even think I would know where to begin uh, or if I would want to, because it's like I, I think about, you know, various types of uh, of of freedom that that you could express. Like, I don't know, man, it's complicated. I don't think I actually have an answer to that because it's, it's so, a tough one. huh? Yeah. Like it's 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 actually outside of it. And I and I feel like um I feel like outside of really putting like some hefty work into into probably an answer that would be disappointing to most people uh, mm. because it would be bland and boring. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, mm-hmm. That's uh, a tough I, one. I, Always I, tough to not have yeah, bland and boring I, answers. Yeah, I I don't I don't think any I, I I don't think I don't think I could come up with a way to to generally improve the usage of social media. Okay, so let's um, let's broaden it then. Um, would you say overall, if you you could pick two paths for humanity? 
one without social media and one with social media and you know the problems within each path could be solved within each path which which path would you pick overall so okay my life would be better mm -hmm. without social media my employment would not be but my employment also probably would exist in a different form without it right um and so, you know, could, can I imagine a world without social media where I get to, uh, where I can still get to do what I do? Uh, well, that's, you know, that's early Justin TV, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and, and that's kind of beautiful and neat and kind of Wild West rules a little bit. But, but, uh, uh, but I think about that and I would like, you know, I think, you know, that would be a nice reversion because social media, I mean, without a doubt it has negatively affected me in many individual instances in mm. general i probably have benefited from it but um i would i would i think i would honestly prefer prefer life without it without and that it. doesn't mean that doesn't mean i can just walk away i mean like you know i would prefer it be not a thing for anybody it's it has become unfortunately uh, so closely tied into the way things operate mm -hmm. um that it's kind of uh, a puzzle piece that can't really be removed without, uh, without having to start an entirely new puzzle. Um, yeah, that's, the, so, yeah, that's I, a really good way to put it as well. I would 100% prefer life without it, though. I think people would be happier. I think I was happier. Um, the times that I have caught my hand going to my cell phone um, – when like yeah just like you know i'm standing there and i walk out i i get out of the shower and i grab my phone and i'm like what the hell am i doing mm -hmm. like like it we are trained to to be obsessed to be involved and so i see that and man it would be nice if that's a yes yeah, why wired, wired into our structures okay yeah well yeah. with that i want to know the opposite case as well for oh, what what you would think at least what is something that social media has given us outside of benefiting you based on work and twitch uh, uh -huh. and so on. What is something that it, that it has given us, or at least that you think it's given us, that we can't uh, really find anywhere else? So, is is does do we even have that, or is this is this something that's just it's just made things easier? I think the challenge is is all of the benefits also come with with contrasting negatives, right? Mm -hmm. um, I love that I can figure out what happened somewhere else very very fast. Mm -hmm. I love and enjoy the fact that uh, that that main main uh, traditional news media doesn't tell me how to think, mm -hmm. but also, I mean, because I can be like, okay, what's going on in this other area, right? And I can see general human response to stuff, but the the negative side that comes with that is also inaccuracy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, and uncareful. Uh, understandings and opinions and perspectives and so so i think the benefits of like you know act inf information access are crazy good right mm -hmm. like if i want to know something dude i can get it and and that comes from social media it doesn't really come from standard internet it comes from social media right that's a social media thing um it's it's not it's not traditional internet because growing up on with uh with america online and uh and and all of those things like like it wasn't there. It wasn't there. You'd, you'd still be waiting a, a day or two if something, but if something else happens on the world dude, or in the world, dude, it's cool that we can know it right away. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. Um, but well, again, mm -hmm. unfortunately it, it comes with lots of negatives. There's something interesting there that I just, that I just thought of. Um, and it's, it's that, well, okay, yes, we have a lot of information access now, which is cool. I think that's really good. And the con that comes with it is, well, incorrect information or wrong information or misleading information, and also the incentivization and almost amplification of mobs. So, uh -huh. so now people have information and they can treat the information as almost like a, a focal point to stand behind together. Um, uh -huh. And the interesting thing about that is if we compare and contrast what we have now to what we had before, well, what we had before is no one really had information. Like you had the people in the know or the people traveling and, and going to different schools and fellowships or within governments. Like information was localized within its respective structure. But for the general population, most of them had no idea what was going on. They only knew what, was, what, what information was given to them. And if mm -hmm. someone did a lot of research, which... You know, not everybody's a research type. There's actually very few people that are research types. Um, then they could figure something out. But, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is 
before we had a system where the general population knew not very much. And now we have a system where the general popula- population knows a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But in knowing a little bit more and having access to all the information, there's going to be wrong information in there. And I almost see it as as people view the second part as a problem. Okay, well, people might know more, but they're also going to get tricked or they're going to be misled by information uh, and so on and so forth. But then it's like, well, maybe that's just part of it. Like, you know, maybe that's not yeah. maybe that's not something that we can actually combat. Like, yeah, I don't, and I don't think that there is. Mm-hmm. Um, the, like, I mean, because, like, I, I don't think there's a way you can combat that at all. And that's and that's kind of like going back to the other question, right? Like, what would I change? And I'm like, well, probably nothing, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. because the benefits are 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 awesome. What and and are they worth the bad stuff? Um, I don't know. Like sometimes, sometimes not. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, definitely, I don't think that there's necessarily a way to combat that. I, I because I think in combating that. You uh, you open up a it's kind of like, uh, OK, setting precedence is horrible, right? Like when it's used incorrectly, you can like like you have you can go back to let like like you can even like just state it politically. It's obvious when when one president from one party here in America, right, uh, sets a precedent like I'm going to we are going to use executive orders in X way. Well, the next guy gets to do that, too. Mm hmm. And then he does something, and then the next guy does something too, and the next guy does something too. And so I look at that, and I'm like, okay, so the way to combat misinformation is is by, you know, putting some sort of limit and control on it. Well, what about when I don't want my – what what about when I don't – want the thing that i'm saying to be controlled hmm. um and the the answer is okay well that's when that control actually becomes bad and a negative thing well then that means it was negative the whole time mm-hmm. exactly uh, yeah and so so it was it was never actually good mm-hmm. and so yeah i just don't think that there is a way you can control that i i'm i'm just generally against that because it's like i see i see the danger of that. Mm-hmm. I don't want somebody telling me what I don't want somebody telling me what to say. And so even though even though John over there is saying something crazy and he's convincing some people that it's crazy and it maybe it's actually doing real damage too. Maybe it's making people hate people that he that they shouldn't hate. Mm-hmm. Like the danger is is the second I start controlling John um I start controlling John, well I'm probably going to get controlled in the future as well. And, and even like, it, it, it's just, yes, yeah, it sucks. So I'm yeah. like, nah, I probably, probably don't want to mess with that. It's the, the, the mech, well, it's the absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Once you have a mechanism in place that allows you to do things beyond the current limits, it just, it's just a matter of time before that goes wrong. It's, it's like a matter yeah. of statistics, you know, or there's so many people in the world and there's so many people that will hold that station or will have that power that maybe it's a power that no one should have. Um, okay. With that, like we could, we could probably talk about this forever, but what I, I did want to talk about with you was Twitch um, and yes. how it's changed. Cause well, I think that's a, uh, that's, that's important. So you've been, how long have you been streaming for, Jared? I've been streaming for four years now. Four years. And you started with, uh, what'd you say? I think it was a shooter. Well, I mean, I, so, so those streams don't count because those are like way before, like, you know, Hey, my, my friend wants to watch me play Titanfall, right? Titanfall. That's that's like, yeah. Yeah. Like, but no, if you really talk about like when I started, started, um, I'm, I, I started, I guess I started in the souls community and a lot of that oddly enough for funnily enough is because I used to watch you and, um, and Hob and the other boys. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, like that's, that was just my, that was my Twitch experience. So as I, as I start streaming, like, you know, I, I started technically with, uh, with a bunch of PlayStation titles. We're doing, you know, resident evil, we're doing uh, God of war, which allowed me to kind of cheat Twitch obvious for obvious reasons and skip the starting stages. Obviously. Uh, tell, tell me what the obvious reasons I were. I mean, I, I look enough like Kratos That's uh, <laughs> that, that I can get the, cl- that I can get a click. Yeah. And as stupid as that is, we were talking about it earlier today, actually, like, like I, you know, all the time people are like, how do you get your first few followers? And I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you get your first 20 people watching you? Oh, hell, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. Like, like I got to skip that phase. 
Um, I mean, I could probably come up with a with a with an answer that would be that would assist somebody. But the reality of it is, I didn't have to live it or experience it. Mm-hmm. I just I just got to bypass that because I looked like Kratos, and uh, and so we did the God of War thing, and then I you know got into Bloodborne and Dark Souls and all the stuff that that I watched you guys all play, and, right? Um, and so that kind of and then you know I kind of found uh, I found a little a little uh, place to live inside darkest dungeon for a while. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and before darkest dungeon self-destructed by releasing early access of its next title and split the viewer base. And uh, I want to know about that actually. So darkest dungeon you did really well with, I like you actually oh, did yeah. some really good runs. I remember watching you do these runs and it, it was the only non like it's a, it's an RPG. So it's a turn-based RPG. Um, yeah. It's it. Yeah. 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 It's like a turn-based the, rogue, roguelike, it's not thing. you can wait you can pause between your actions so it's it's based uh-huh. more on strategy and resource management correct me if i'm wrong than it yeah, is yeah yeah that's accurate than it and, is and, twitch and, execution uh, and, and quick math yeah and quick math yes and so you were really good at that i remember you did a a, a full Jeez, I I don't I don't remember what it was. It's interesting yeah, how you can like, find something basically impressive. Basically, every every single thing you can do in the game within within a hundred within, the, games, within weeks. the game's time limit. Yeah, that's the game's time and, limit. Okay. Yeah. And so, well, the, well, I had a question about that actually. So, did you do a ton of research when you were planning this run, or did you just kind of stumble into it? I played enough of the game that I just kind of suspected it was possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I, you know, we, we decided to try it and we, we oddly enough, almost got it on our first try and then got yep. it on our second. Um, but again, that's like, you know, that, that game for us, I, I lived that I lived and breathed that game for quite a while. Um, and, and thoroughly enjoyed it. So it was, um, yeah, it, it was, I mean, it's very well. similar. Yeah. It just lined up really well. So it wasn't like some, some extensive amount of research. It was just like, okay, I think we can do it. We know, we know the components of the game. And, and even if we fail, I mean, the nice thing and everybody, you know, this, you're, you're a souls boy. Uh, <laughs> like sometimes failing is the thing people want to watch. Yeah. Like, yeah. like that's sometimes you want to see a guy die on the very last boss, last possible moment. Sometimes that's, that's the thing that's fun about Twitch. Uh, yeah. And it's not, it's not hate watching. It's just the drama of it is just really enjoyable. Mm-hmm. And, and so it was one of those things where it was like, oh, I don't have to really know if it's doable. I just have to try it. And, and, you know, we got it faster than we thought, but yeah, that was, uh, I did that for a long time and I, I really enjoyed it. And then uh, it kind of just died. Um, well, hold, that's something that got into my head actually, when I was doing a lot of souls runs is I started to, it wasn't started to realize, like, I think I always knew but then when you're streaming for so long and you're always trying to figure out what's more successful or how to be more successful, um, one of the things that got into my head while I was doing runs, which should not be in my head because you want to focus on the run, is, okay, what's good for me right now and what's good for my viewership? Well, what's good for me and what's good for the longevity of my uh, finances and sub count? And yeah. it, it's not intuitive to people that... Me doing what's good for me isn't always what's doing good for my channel. Um, yeah. You would think those things were in line, especially if you're doing a run where it's like everybody wants to see you succeed. It's like, yeah, you might want to see me succeed, but you probably want to see me succeed three and a half weeks from now and not tomorrow, which uh-huh. is it's it's also like, OK, well, then, you know, what do I do if I have the skill to do it tomorrow? Do I it, it raises a bunch of questions that. Oh yeah, become very well, we, difficult to answer. Uh, we talked about it recently, like uh, on my channel over here, and it always. I mean, I have you know, I have lots of friends on team on team Hitless, mm-hmm. like like that's 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 a that I I grew up in that culture as a viewer, uh, and then as a streamer, I I enjoyed it all, and so it was uh, like it, we, those were the people we would raid, and it's like looking at it at it. There are times where people would throw runs, dude, and it was just part of the and 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 you know it, and it's and you know what, I get it, it's fine. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like that's part of it, and and then you know it's like we we've seen it so many times, and I never fault somebody for it because I'm just like, okay, you know, you're giving people something to enjoy and something to it's and and the reason why is because we have all seen people who are. You know, there you have this. You have somebody who's h- working hard on streaming, and they're doing really well, and they have the viewership, and and they're sitting at their like they're sitting at ninety viewers, and they're mm-hmm. so close to getting the run, and 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 they know. I mean, we've seen it happen before. They oh, get yeah. the run down to thirty viewers. Done. Over. Moments and done. And they go to a new game, but nobody cares. Yep. 
and or even they do they stay within souls and nobody cares they, they lose half the viewership because the drama of it mm-hmm. is fun and enjoyable and uh and so it's uh it's it's just a really interesting part of the dynamic and the people who are really really good were able to identify that and you know they're they're not stupid i'll tell you i mean i and throwing a run is probably the wrong term it's probably easier to say not being careful i say well that's, that's probably a little more fair it's a tough thing because the bottom line is look if i'm doing a run and then I go and I'm I'm at whatever Cinder for Dark Souls three or whatever it might yeah. be, and I I'm looking intense and I'm focused, and then if I said at that point out loud, I'm gonna throw this run now so you guys keep watching, people would be upset. They would be very oh, yeah. upset. However, uh-huh. if I just in my head was like, okay, I'm and I'm not saying I I've done this because I try not to do this as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But in my head, if I'm like. I'm going to be deceptive here purposely and I'm going to allow myself to make a mistake or be a little bit more reckless than I should. Yeah. Because, you know, I don't know what to play next and I'm afraid of losing my view or whatever, whatever it could be. Then people will be like, you know, they will give you the, Oh, like you'll get it next time. Or, Uh you know, like it, it's a weird incentive structure because you're incentivized to, to be deceptive on that front. But at the same time, it's almost like you can't talk about it. If you talk about it, then um, then they know you know, and then the yeah. jig's up, like the game's over. It's like you're almost playing uh-huh. a game within itself, and it's a game of manipulation, but it's a game of 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 agreed upon consens- con- consensual manipulation. Uh-huh. It, it's the strangest thing. Um, oh yeah, and it happens all across Twitch and all across was, social media. And I'll tell you, I mean, it was it was it was there was a time period where it was like really evident that Mm -hmm. it was going on because everybody was just getting good at souls, man. Like, like I always, somebody, uh, you know, like we have one day a week, we look at memes and watch videos and stuff over here, right? Like somebody, somebody put a video in and it involved like, like you guys, you and, and Hob and Squilla and like, uh, like everybody is like the original run. And, and I look at that stuff and I'm like, okay, that stuff used to be very impressive to me. Yes. And I still think it's kind of cool and neat, um, especially because I was there. Like, I was there for your run. I was there for Hobbs' run. I was, like, I was there, mm-hmm. like, watching and, and, and cheering, right? Um, but then after this time period where all of a sudden uh, we, we know how to do the runs because you guys have all figured them out and they're refined and everybody shared tactics and copied each other and can do them mm-hmm. – um, there was just this time period where you would see people and you were like, you could just do this run, but you're not. And it became just a regular cultural thing. Uh, uh, and, and it was just, uh, it was a really strange time in the souls community and, and people still don't like to talk about it, but it was, it was right around like, Oh geez. It was when everybody was kind of trying to do all of like, you know, the, the original God run, like yeah. one, two, three. Yeah. Like it was during, it was during one, two, three's time period. Mm-hmm. You just, it was just all over the place. And it's as a viewer, like you chose to ignore it. You chose not to be engaged. Yeah. Just pretend like it's not that. happening. Yeah. Cause it's fun. But, yeah. But yeah. There definitely is a, was a degree of, uh, of, of, uh, deception that was just really interesting to see it's a weird thing it's a it's a really strange thing and people don't like to talk about it because um well streamers in particular i think at least i've found they don't like to talk about it because there is a there is a guilt there or a shame there whether they're conscious of it or not um Uh i think in most cases i think not in all cases of course some people are just deliberate and being like yeah no i threw it and that's what I wanted to do. But a lot of others are like, mm, you know, like, no, don't, yeah. don't shine a light there. Like, don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please don't, mm. please don't slow down my clip. Yeah. Like, let's just, uh, let's just uh, pass by that. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting yeah. thing. But anyway, back to Darkest Dungeon. Okay. So you're saying you did that with your, with your Blood Moon run? We, uh, we decided to beat it. Um, mm-hmm. We decided to do the the hundred and the the we we coined the phrase hundred and one because people were doing these hundred hundred percent runs and it didn't have everything and so we were mm-hmm. like okay well let's just use a phrase that means more than what they're doing right mm-hmm. um, and so we <laughs> yeah. coined the phrase uh, yeah. it doesn't actually mean anything it's not you know it's not Hollow Knight hundred and twelve percent or whatever right. um, it's it's something specific though and so you know we do that and um, that was a good choice but the branding of that like that the the way you name the run. That's a really cool way to do it. 
stinks. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> yeah, so no we did. It, it was fun. It was really cool. And it was a pivotal point in my, in, uh, in, you know, for me, mostly uh, as a point of pride. Mm -hmm. Um, but it also, I'll tell you the reason we didn't drag that stuff out is because we knew like, like I'm, I, I, you know, I want to do, I want to do this as a job and, and I'm doing a bunch of other stuff that, that like, I've gotten more jobby since we last talked and we'll yeah. talk about all that. But like with Twitch, I, I want to maximize what I do here and sitting in a category and getting more viewers is not, um, is not, it feels like it's healthy for the stream, but it's actually not. Mm -hmm. And because I, exactly what I said, the category died. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the, like, I knew that, you know, you, I, I'll never bank. I realize after watching, you know, friends succeed and fail, succeed and fail, um, banking your career on a game lasting forever is really stupid. Mm -hmm. And even a genre lasting forever. And so, um, because I really, really like this job a lot, mm -hmm. uh, like a lot, a lot, um, I decided, okay, well, let's beat it and let's continue on uh, with with doing other things. And we are going to lose viewership. And and uh, and 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 you know, we've talked like the thing I value in Twitch is never top end; it's always baseline. And baseline uh, <clears throat> baseline can be measured by playing the worst possible thing that you could play and seeing who's going to show up. Mm -hmm. Like like that's the thing that I value. And and uh, and you know, tier one, two, and three subs because that shows that shows the baseline rising, right? Like, I don't care. I don't care to have 2000 subs because from, from a guy who decided to gift me 1500 of them, mm -hmm. like, cause that guy might not be there next week. Mm -hmm. But if you have 2000 subs that are individuals concurrent, yeah, those don't go away mm -hmm. to the same degree. And so looking at that, I'm like, you know, I looked at darkest dungeon and we were like, okay, well let's finish this run and then let's kind of move on because the danger of depending, you know, depending on someone on, on a specific thing. And, and you know what? We, I'm really glad we prepared for that because it went away. The, you go to that category. There's like maybe two people streaming it right now because the second one came out. It's early access. It's an incomplete game that bothers people for some reason because they can't read the warnings. <laughs> um, and then, and then that category suffers. The other one suffers. You split the player base and now that's gone. And it's like, okay, well, good. Good thing we ran away. Mm -hmm. because, because like we can sure there's things people prefer me to play right like there's definite i i mean i'm i'm sitting here even right now right like i'm playing i'm playing a game from 1983 mm -hmm. um like that's it's old um and but it works and and people enjoy it and it's uh and then there's things that are smart and stupid and and so we just kind of uh not that we ran from darkest dungeon i enjoy it greatly still i'm looking forward to the second one you better believe i'm gonna play a lot of that thing mm -hmm. uh, but we kind of foresaw the the fall of the or the fall of that game before it happened, and I'm just you know I'm thankful we got out. Okay, so why? How did you foresee the fall of this game? Because um, Darkest uh, Dungeon Two came out, it was early access, just mm. like one. It was a different yep. format uh, completely. Like I remember playing it. Why did uh, Why did Darkest Dungeon One catch on so hard, and Darkest Dungeon Two just kind of not? I, I think it's because it's the same player base. Like it, it literally has to do with with uh, with taking the player base from one complete game that's a full complete experience, right? Mm -hmm. It has everything, and then showing something new that some people might dis might dislike, but most people are generally actually going to enjoy it. Um, it's new, it's fresh, it's exciting. But then it's early access, and and that's not the whole game. I mean, dude, I'll tell you, I I played like two hundred hours of early access and still had fun. So that's pretty good for early access. It's pretty good, but comparing it to the original well it wasn't has a lot less stuff the original early access as well uh for yeah, a was. period of it time was. yeah so then uh, how it, it, how do these how come darkest dungeon 2 with early access didn't do well whereas darkest dungeon 1 with early access did i think that it's it's because we already experienced we already experienced a, a complete product in in a genre that while it's different uh. is a sequel right like if uh i like i love i love dark souls 3 man mm -hmm. i love it i think dark souls 3 is such a great game uh if if uh if we had dark souls well dark souls 1 is not the best comparison because of the time disparity but uh but you know like dark souls 1 is pr a pretty damn big game mm -hmm. we go to dark souls 3 wow it's better it's nicer the the combat has more flow to it it has some issues but things are good it's got some bugs all right that's fine and then you you get up to the big old testicle tree you kill it and it says it says all right great job 
Great job. Well done. <laughs> yeah. And and you're like, okay, well, I'll go back to the old one. And then you realize that like the the maybe the multiplayer community is dead and and maybe co-op was a thing I really enjoyed in that. Right. Uh and 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 but that's dead now. So now I don't get to have that. But then now that community is is has now moved on to this new one, but there's not as much stuff. So I I lose interest. And and just enough people went through that type of churn that uh that it 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 just killed both of them now when D- when when darkest dungeon 2 comes out that's going to be a healthy category for a year two years oh, like that's just what it is i mean it's 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 going to have because it's it, they're going to have a modding community mm-hmm. uh it'll it'll just kind of pick back up and and that's that's at least what i what i suspect but when i say like we kind of first saw the fall of it it's it's less that we knew it would happen mm-hmm. and more that uh we refuse to be stupid and assume that it it wasn't you know it's yeah. like I would have loved for it to. I would have loved for it to like. Well, what it what it like, seems just, like from what you've said is it seems like okay, Darkest Dungeon One was a completely new concept. So when it was in early access, you started and you only had up to go from there. But then yeah. once Darkest Dungeon One was played to death and Darkest Dungeon Two was coming out, we had experienced a full finished Darkest Dungeon One, which was a great game with many DLCs, many different uh, classes and things to do. So then mm-hmm. it it would be instead of starting from zero and going up, it's starting from seventy, eighty, and dropping down to twenty for Darkest Dungeon Two yeah. early access, which yeah. doesn't feel good and people don't like. And so even though you're increasing, like I think a new chapter was released. Uh, for Darkest uh-huh, Dungeon yeah. 2, yep. And it's it's awesome, and, and I we visit it for a day, and it's cool. I'm looking forward to the real one, but mm-hmm. yeah. So, so, but our, our my career was not it has tied to, catch to up. that. Right, yeah. it wasn't yeah. tied to that. So Darkest Dungeon 2 has to catch up, and then when it catches up, you're, well, if it does, you're confident that it will do as well as Darkest Dungeon 1, or it'll be okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It'll do fine. It'll do, it'll do great. I mean, did, you know, it's, it's, the comparison with Souls games can be there. Like, um, like I mean, yeah, Dark Souls Two's you know it's got some, some people hate it, some people love it. It's actually that's probably a fair comparison. Huh. Some people hate it, some people love it. It's 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 a little different in a lot of ways that matter to people, right? But when you went from DS One to DS Two, and 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 as as DS Two was there, it had a, it has a it had a healthy community. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think you know I think the difference between Darkest Dungeon One and Two, uh, it's it's probably going to be similar. You're going to have a healthy community. It's the newest one. People are going to be there. There's going to be mods. It's gonna, it's going to be good. And 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 I'm you know we're looking forward to going back to it and really enjoying enjoying that. But at the same time, uh, you better believe you better believe I'm going to expect that to die after a year or two and and not be dependent on it. Everything yeah everything dies. There's very very few things that have stood the full test of yeah. time. Oh yeah. Now in transitioning out of Darkest Dungeon. Um, I noticed that you, well, you went full variety. Um, and uh-huh. a lot of the things you did were shooters, uh, but yes. but movement shooters. You, you've said you like movement shooters in the past. And so for me, I'm, I don't know if you've seen that Counter-Strike clip, um, but I can't, I can't shoot. I, I can't, uh-huh. I can't hit anything. So I've never, <laughs> I don't have the, the aptitude to understand the appeal of a lot of these games. Uh-huh. So why is it that you, so particularly like these types of shooters because Darkest Dungeon is the farthest thing away from a, a oh, shooter. Yeah, yeah. and it, I'll tell you the transition. You know, it was it was a challenge for a lot of our people, but uh, we also, you know, I, I was doing like half variety during Darkest Dungeon, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I, excuse me, I made sure I was spending time outside of it <laughs> good um, cough, yeah. because I knew that was going to happen at some point. Um, but I'll tell you, so so I've gone through this really weird thing over the course of the last year, right? Um, I I engaged with a community that I okay so here's how it happened right I engaged with a community without the without the idea being <clears throat> to do it in a professional sense mm-hmm. um I I I'm I'm you know I was born in '83 I'm I'm you know I'm not old but I'm old um, middle aged yeah you know yeah we're getting there right yeah. and and and. Uh, I, I gotta say, dude, like I, I love, I love this age range that I'm in right now. I love being in my thirties. Thirties are awesome. Uh-huh. Uh, the world stops being as scary as it used to be, um, and and uh, not because it gets easier, but because you realize like like all the hard stuff doesn't matter as much as I thought it did. Oh, okay. Um, and so engaging with a community online, in particular, um, like retro FPS, is where I really <laughs> well, where hold what on. I did. In my, uh, I hate to cut you uh, off, but yeah. I want I want to know no, more about do. that. Uh, the hard stuff uh, doesn't yeah. matter as much as you thought it did. So tell me about that, and then we'll get back to where we were. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's that's worth exploring, right? Um, so when I was a kid, 
and a girl didn't like me, it felt horrible. Oh, yeah. It felt like life was over, right? Like like it was just bad. And when my boss was mad at me at work, it I it made me scared for my employment. Or when uh when I found myself to be short on funds mm-hmm. and life was scary because how am I going to enjoy like or where am I going to get food? Like after experiencing enough of that and realizing that all of these monumental problems did get solved, um, it, it gives you, or it's at least given me the confidence to be like, oh, okay, I don't have to panic, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and that really started to manifest more <clears throat> in my thirties. And part of that, you know, I'm I'm married, and and uh, and so that does remove the romantic aspect uh, of the tumultuous thing, which is a huge oh, thing for okay. a lot of people because there's, you know, there's a lot of you. Chemically, there's a lot going on in us, right? Yep. Like uh, when you're looking at a girl you like, you feel a lot of stuff that that makes you feel panicky. Um, yep. <laughs> but um, the general idea of these challenges seem so big, and then in hindsight, okay, everything turned out okay with without me having to to go to battle and to to really put tons of effort they just kind of worked out and so i found in my 30s that when for instance um when for instance i need to figure out uh a a particular challenge with a vehicle how am i going to figure out how to fix this get this vehicle fixed Mm -hmm. uh i can't afford it um I've already been through that song and dance, you know, three, four, five, six, seven times in my life. And so it just is less scary because I'm like, okay, it worked itself out last time. Here's the way it happened. Maybe I'll try that again. Maybe, maybe it's a different way to do it, but it's going to work out. And it's just life in general. I've found in my thirties feels a lot less. Uh, you have a lot more a perspective. Lot less scary. Yeah. A lot more yeah. perspective. You, you know more what you're capable of, how you can, how you can handle or what you, what, what you can and cannot handle. Yeah. It's just, it's general, it's genuinely less scary. I like, and, and, um, uh, you know, I, it's, it's just, it's, it's a very, very nice place to land. And, and I found that, and I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's an age thing. Maybe it's an experience thing. Maybe it's, uh, maybe like maybe people different experience it in different age ranges. I don't know, but I'm finding in my thirties to just have a lot less, uh, a lot less concerns mm-hmm. that seem, that seem big. There's a lot less giants in my life, you know. Yeah, I think and I it's think not that they're not there. It's that it's that we've already dealt with things that are similar. Right. I think with it with experience, it's just you you start to understand the nature of things a lot more, which is something that you can't tell people. Like you can't tell someone this is how it's going to be, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I get it." No, it's, yeah. It, a lot of people have to go. Th- well, I think most people have to go through it, and just you have to experience it for what it is, and you, there's no shortcut through that. Um, yeah. which is not a commonly understood thing. And I don't think a lot of people say that, but I think it's very important back to the, the shooters and engaging in the community non-professionally. Yeah. So this is a, this is a funny thing that like, it kind of stems from, uh, from some stuff that I, I was kind of learning last time we talked, right? Like, uh, like I was getting involved with all these, uh, all these game developers and stuff. And, and as a streamer, that's like something that, that streamers feel like they should do. Like, oh, how can I get this developer to notice me? How can I get this publishing company to notice me? These social media companies to notice me? And you, mm-hmm. and you kiss their ass and you do clips and you do all this stuff. Yep. And and eventually I was like, I don't, you know, I saw other people doing it and I was like, I don't like that. I don't want to be like that. That looks insincere and cheesy. Um, and so I, I found some projects that I just genuinely was interested in and just kind of became a fan, right? Like I wanted to see them succeed. I wanted to enjoy them. And, uh, and so I started setting these habits of, of sincere interaction mm-hmm. with, uh, with people that I was interested in, uh, and becoming a genuine fan. And oddly enough, I, uh, why do you oddly think enough? Like, hmm. why do you think the sincerity is important there? Um, because, well, why do you think the enjoyment, uh, the crucial part of that is, is sincerity. Like, why did you focus on that? Um, I don't know. I think it was, it's the natural thing. If you like, like, for example, I can actually, he's probably in my chat right now, uh, and doesn't realize the, the significance that, that he played in this. But, uh, my friend Alex, uh, has a game he's developing that I just thought was really cool. Mm-hmm. And, and I saw screenshots of it and I was like, man, this is neat. And Alex and I didn't know each other. Um, and, and I just was like, oh, man, this is cool. I would like to see this succeed. And I didn't look at it as an opportunity for me to succeed. I wasn't like, oh, I can benefit from this. Mm-hmm. 
like I, that just felt dirty. And again, I saw that in other people um, trying to get, trying to interact for their own success. And I'm like, ah, I just don't care. I'm tired of caring about this t- sort of thing. And so mentally I just became a fan and a fan gets excited about things. Right. And so uh, when I'd see updates and be like, Oh, this is cool. I'd make sure I'm commenting on it. Not because I wanted to be noticed, but because I just wanted to say those things. And I very purposefully was like, I'm going to just enjoy, enjoy these things. And, and through that and a few other projects, I found myself enjoying the things that I did when I was a kid. And a lot of those turned out to be retro first person, retro inspired first person shooters, right? right? Like I grew up playing doom with my dad. Uh, my dad left my family when I was young and the only way I could see him, uh, I remember the during story. Weekdays yeah. was, yeah, was to play doom through our modem. And so that became a really pivotal part in my life. Um, and so it was, uh, it just kind of those all of all of those developers are all connected. And so you find one that you like and you find something else you like. And then I just kind of was like, man, I liked this as a kid and I'm really just enjoying them now. Yeah. And 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 this goes into the thing of like Twitter became fun for me. Like I just wanted to look at cool stuff. Right. Um, and interact with cool stuff and share cool stuff. And and as I began to do that, um, the it's really funny because the result was that I became friends with these guys who are making these things. And, uh, and the goal not being to be, you know, not my goal, not to be their friends, but my goal to just enjoy it. But people kind of like being enjoyed, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, and so, well, I, th- it kind I of think opened uh, up really odd career doors for me. It's, it's, uh, the, well, there's something to be said here about, what Twitch originally was. And I think what Twitch originally was, or Justin TV, or I think it was more geared towards this at least, was more authenticity. So here's a mm-hmm. person and they are engaged with what they're doing. Whatever they're doing, it might be, uh, it, I, don't, I don't know back then if there were speed runs or the gaming content or what it, what it was particularly, but it was someone doing something for themselves and then people get to watch and participate that to some, yeah. Yeah. To some level. And then slowly but surely, it became, uh, what is the word, commoditized? Is that the word? Uh, it, yeah, it yeah, became yeah, more well, of yeah, a I, more of a product. Yeah, it, and yeah. Um, it's straight now. Things are straying further and further and further away from authenticity and more and more towards pandering. I would say, mm-hmm. um, which I, I think is a, a difficult thing, and I think that most people who are stuck in that will have to do more or less what you did and find the authenticity in their content again, or, you know, find things they like just because they like them, not because it's necessarily, uh, there's an agenda there or it's a good move for them to make. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before we continue there, sorry, I, every time you talk, there's, I, I I have, I always have questions. I, I always want to know what people think. Um, so you talked about doom with your dad and I remember yeah. this story and I was trying to think about, about, about this a long time ago because I remember how games were back when I was young. So there was, you know, there's a super Nintendo N64, there's a PlayStation and there were games that were created just to be games more or less. Now games are, are, are of course more, more mainstream and stuff like that. But I had a question about nostalgia and what you think. So yeah. I remember playing, like uh, Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask or the mm-hmm. Donkey Kong the Country. The worst game in the world, yeah. The worst, okay, fair enough. Um, or the Mega Man X or, you know, all these games. And they were great games, except for the one that is the worst game in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I remember looking back and being <laughs> like, wow, that music was so good, even though it was 8-bit, like Mega Man, Mega yeah. Man X music. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. it's great. Oh, Mega Man music's actually really impressively uh, like written, but yeah. <laughs> and then from there, I, I don't see that replicated over the ages or getting better over the ages. I see that as like the almost like a, a unique peak, like it's separate from everything mm-hmm. else, and they could never find that again. And I'm wondering, okay, is that because of nostalgia, because I grew up with that, or... Is that is did they have something there that we no longer have? So I okay, so I some of this is really funny. Somebody asked the other day, uh, and this is within the the within the retro inspired FPS thing uh, that I'm that I'm involved with now and that I write for and all this stuff, right? right. Somebody asked the question, um, wh- do you think nine or what era do you think was was peak first person shooter? Mm-hmm. And my answer was now. 
Okay. Now, I'm a huge fan of retro first-person shooters. Um, and actually, I, I enjoy the style of them in particular. And there's a whole bunch of new ones that are amazing and and that that replicate a lot of the feeling and sentiment from the from the old things. Um, and and so, my opinion on it is that we have figured out how to make really good games and really purposeful experiences. And there are some there are those games. A lot of those original ones, you know, they have some of that, but they also have the nostalgia, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I really feel, I really feel like we're living in like peak gaming right now, and I'm not talking about Last of Us Two and all of that stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm mostly speaking about like there are people who are, who are taking games now and are doing better jobs than the games we grew up with. Um, it just is crazy that the games that shine, most, most of them actually developed games like uh in a similar way that the that the success or the ones i'm talking about are now like for instance i have friends who uh like i am part of part of the some of the stuff i do is i help people um uh, very specifically craft experiences within their games i do some writing and stuff for it uh mm -hmm. and and help them craft experiences that are going to uh to be to have some sort of gravity and pull players in uh and create a very specific experience and feelings uh and so that's that's a thing that people do when they craft games now is they craft games some people do um and and i look at games like for instance uh we i can say doom right the original doom 1993 mm -hmm. um that game they did that and, and if you listen to interviews with these guys back then, they're like, okay, so let's talk about this level and let's talk about how I made this level and let's talk about how, uh, how it was supposed to make you feel as you go through this section and how we controlled your movement and your eyes and where you're looking. And, and I see that stuff. Now, the technology was limited, but the reason that game stands to me the test of time is specifically because it, it's crafted experiences. And so you have games like... Uh, Mega Man's a great example. Mega Man, we think about the music and we think about all these things, but as mm -hmm. a whole, the entire like like depending on the Mega Man in particular, I mean, those are really purposefully crafted experiences. They wanted you to have a very specific experience. You had it, you had fun with it. Um, they weren't throwing shit at a wall. Like like they know what they're doing. And mm -hmm. and so I think that the nostal the reason the nostalgia is so strong is because those experiences, I mean, I think they really were actually legitimately good experiences. Mm -hmm. I there's there's some games that that doesn't apply to Halo, uh, but there's there's other stuff that that was very finely crafted and and the nostalgia is is absolutely there because it is justified. Okay, so now is that lost? Is that lost on modern games or even games a generation or two ago because of the influx of people within gaming? Like, is it possible that the people back then that did want to make games, really wanted to make games. And because of that, they were capable of creating these wonderful crafted experiences. Whereas now there is a, there's a, there's a, a ton, ton more game, game, game developers. And there's a ton more people just, anybody can develop a game like a 15 year old, 12 year old can develop a game. Um, is it possible that they looked at it and didn't see what you saw. Instead, they saw a lower resolution version of what you saw and they tried to replicate that. And that, because it's become so ubiquitous, has has almost lowered the... Not... It hasn't lowered it, of course, mm -hmm. but it's almost... Like, it. The, the ceiling is now perceptually lower. Like, people don't think they can get to those like things it's like anymore. It's, it's, like, uh, it's, like, it's like food service, right? Mm -hmm. like, like, uh, like, you're in a small town... And there's this there's this incredible Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's the only one there, and it's incredible. Uh, and that person, they have they have a lot of experience and knowledge, and they just legitimately make good food. Um, that's what I look at, like all like the games that we had as kids. Dude, there's actually some really bad ones. We just don't remember them, right? Like they didn't do as they didn't do quite as well, and and we just. We yeah. didn't buy them because games were because sixty dollars was a lot of money back then. Holy crap! Yep. Um, but um, but then you know so you got that one Mexican food restaurant right and and it's owned by by this this amazing uh, this amazing family with amazing experience or great cooks, uh, and then uh, as the town grows, you get more Mexican food restaurants and 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 some of them might actually be just as good. There are some there are some that get planted that are just as good, and you get some really crappy Taco Bells and stuff like that that are that are uh, 
not quite, you know, the same thing. And, um, and so I think that there's, I think there's a saturation thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that it's very easy to put out stuff now. And so, uh, but, but the thing is, is those, those gems still exist. The, there are new gems and that's the thing is it's, uh, like, like we, we experience and remember like these amazing, these amazing classics, right? Um, but the people are still coming out with stuff that are just as good. It's just, yeah, there's, they are a little harder to find. They're definitely harder to find. These you have days. an example of a, of a, uh, in the, in the shooter genre, what oh, would be a classic, yeah, or, um, uh, a new gem? I, I would say in 2018, Dusk came out mm -hmm. and, uh, and Dusk, Dusk is a freaking masterpiece. Uh, there's a reason that it called so many people back to the genre. Like I actually just had to write a thing on it. Um, and, uh, and I, and so I just did another playthrough of it and, and, and I'll tell you, even though it's, it's really interesting because my first playthrough, it didn't, it, I wasn't in love with it, but it called me back. It called me back to the whole genre as a whole. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and in hindsight, I'm looking at why it did it. And it, it, again, it's because it was, it was masterfully crafted, right? Mm -hmm. Like there are, there are a lot though within that genre that I'm, that, that I consider to be masterpieces that are coming out. <laughs> uh, we're kind of in a, in a, I guess a, um, a re, uh, revival within that genre in general mm -hmm. which is why i'm like it's become uh it's become such a huge part of my life because uh because i see the stuff coming down the pipeline and i'm like oh oh i want to be here for this i want to see this i'm excited about this like i'm a fan of these things right okay last question before we get back on track with that did you so you said while we were talking about the previous games that was it ocarina of time that was the worst game ever made i i kind of say that uh you know jokingly yeah. um i i my 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 real opinion on ocarina of time is that it probably shouldn't have been uh been released in the state it's in right uh and that it has a lot of it it, it feels so in my in my side work, I get delivered a lot of uh, a lot of like like pre alpha versions of games, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, not Ocarina of Time. No, not Ocarina of Time. Sorry, Majora's Mask. I was oh, Majora's, Majora's Mask. Mask. Oh, okay. Majora's Mask. Not okay. Ocarina of Time. Okay. I think Ocarina of Time's good. I think it's a good game. All right. Majora's Mask. Majora's Mask is that I actually think very poorly of. Um, okay. And that's because it, it feels like it feels like it needed another year in the oven, and and everybody goes, well, it did need another year in the oven, and you're like, yes, yes, it did. Yes. And they're like, but you know, it's really good. And you're like, no, 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 no. It needs no, you. You agree it got released too quickly. Yeah. Well, yeah, they didn't have enough time to, to really develop this stuff. Exactly. It's OK to say like it, people have memories about it. And it's, you right, know, it's people. Right. Have, but but honestly, I just think Major, I think Majora's Mask is uh, is a prime example of of nostalgia clouding people's uh, perception of a, of a game. Right. OK, fair enough. All right. Back to the. Uh, I, I like the way you, you put that actually back to the, the shooters and the authenticity yeah. and the game devs and stuff like that. So over this, this last little while after darkest dungeon, you transitioned to more shooters mm -hmm. and now you're talking to devs and stuff like that. So what is it, uh, specifically about the shooters that you like so much? What is it about the gameplay that you enjoy? What is it so, that brings you satisfaction? That's, that's interesting because I think my, my specific answer on on what draws me to it, right, is um, well, I'm I'm getting killed by slime. Uh, yeah, I go. cannot um, tell anything that's happening in this game. This game is very simple looking, but no clue. It's it's insanely complex. It's crazy is it? that they. It's <laughs> yeah, it actually is. Um, oh my gosh, um, but uh, but with so with with classic shooters, there was a very particular feel, yeah. right. Uh, that they had, um, and a lot of that has to do with with the pacing of it, and with uh, yeah, a lot of it is a lot of it is pacing. It's it's kind of like taking really really basic uh, ingredients and and getting really good at working with those. Mm -hmm. And you have this whole grocery store full of stuff that you could do and you could make an amazing meal out of, right? Um I think very highly of new shooters. Mm -hmm. Like I there's a lot of them I think are very very cool and the work that goes into them these massive studios doing incredible things. Um like I I mean I dude I I know people will will bust its balls but I think Apex is a great game. Like I think mm -hmm. it's very, it's technically impressive and it does cool stuff. It's visually neat. The movement's cool. But, um, the thing that draws me to with a particular genre of my interest these days being, uh, 
being classic first person shooters, which when I say classic first person shooters, I mean old and new, right? And and the term kind of is this umbrella statement of of things that have uh, their they generally. Uh, are graphically kind of simple. Uh, the gameplay a lot of the time is is straightforward, um, although you do get some complexity with some of them yeah. being uh, like immersive sims and stuff. Um, but I just really really enjoy enjoy the pacing and the simplicity and the uh, the boiled down type of gameplay, right? Like, uh, which is very contrasting are... to Darkest Dungeon. Yeah, 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 yeah. I it's it it just it, it and I some of it's nostalgia for me. But then I look at guys who don't have nostalgia and them and them accessing and enjoying these things, and it's it's clear that uh, it's clear that these games make people feel cool and and they enjoy them. And and so I think really I think classic FPS called called to me because I you know growing up I did a lot of LAN parties all the time. I would always sit down every weekend. We'd we'd every weekend when I could see my dad. Every other weekend we'd go to my dad's. Right. We mm. we would set up a LAN or a serial connection in the uh, in the garage and we would uh and we'd play games till three four in the morning every night uh and and we deathmatch we play quake and we play doom mm -hmm. and 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 the speed and the pacing and all of those things was just such a it it is it's such an interesting time in gaming right um because you have these games that are old but they're very fast mm -hmm. and so there's almost this contrary feeling to it, right? Um, it, it's it, it becomes definitive of that era of gaming. Uh, first person shooters in the '90s were extremely fast. Uh, they're not Counter Strike, although they're not Twitch shooters. They're more move, like we say, movement based, right? Like like the the expertise in gameplay comes from how you move and what you do, rather than how fast you flick your mouse, right? Um, and and it, it just uh, it's it's an enjoyable thing, and it, it just man, it called me back, and I just. Uh, there's so much variety and there's, I mean, dude, there are to, to put it in perspective, like people who are outside of the, the modern classic first person shooter kind of movement, I guess, for lack of another term. Yes. Um, there are hundreds of games in this genre. There are, if you include, if, if you include like just the stuff that's, that's being worked on and has been published since 2012, uh, 2013, uh, I guess really, you're probably going to say about 400 titles. Oh, and wow. a lot of them are very, very good. So again, it's kind of that deal with the, uh, it's kind of that deal with like the Mexican restaurants in the town. Like you're gonna have some good ones, you're gonna have some bad ones, right? But there's a lot of them because the town is growing. Right, makes sense. Okay, fair enough. So now that um, after the Darkest Dungeon, and then mm -hmm. you started transition into shooters. Now, what's happened between now and then? Because I, I, someone actually just messaged me. Um, earlier this morning, and they're like, "Oh, Jared's writing for a magazine now," and I was like, "Oh, I that's a, that's a pretty big jump." And also, you were telling me there's there's a lot that has changed in your life that <laughs> that, that was a good face. That um, I, I, yeah, I just got leather armor. It's really exciting. It can't get rusted. <laughs> okay, I, it's yeah. it's kind of a big deal. Yeah, sure. There's a lot that's changed in your life since we last talked. So, what happened? So, okay. So, so this amounts to like, so we were talking like, I'm, you know, I'm getting involved and get, just getting excited as a fan, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for us, leather armor on level five is really good. Okay. <laughs> the aqua tours can't do anything to it. It's, it's, man, it's, it's, great, I've been it's great news for everybody. Watching this um, happen. I, I still don't know what you're doing. It looks like you're just like, it's a map clearing so simulator. I'm, I'm basically playing darkest dungeon. Oh, really? Yes. No way. You know, so you know the term roguelike? Yep. I'm playing rogue. Oh, this is the original rogue. This is the original rogue. Yeah, no yeah, yeah, way. Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Uh, so it's, uh, it, yeah, it's it's pretty, it's, it's. Uh, I always tell people this game was inevitable. It was going to happen no matter what, right? Yeah. Uh, because it's D&D. &D. Uh, okay. These guys, if these guys didn't make it, somebody else was going to make it. You're, di you're going in and getting stuff. But yeah, so I'm getting involved with like these games just as a fan, right? <laughs> okay. And I'm getting like legitimately excited and enjoying like these first person shooters and I'm downloading them and, and I'm, I'm, I'm buying them up because I'm just like, man, these are actually good. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize they were actually good. I, I thought I, w I was always like, oh, the glory days of first person shooters were in the 90s, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, and then I'm start experiencing these things and I'm like, oh, these are kind of better mm -hmm. because people understand how to they 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 know what works. They know what works in the cake and what doesn't. Right. Mm -hmm. 
you know you don't put too much salt like uh, and if you put too much salt, the game turns out like Daikatana. Like, like you, you, you know, you know what's good and what's not. And so there, people are finding the right ingredients, right? And they're making them. And and so I'm just getting excited about these things, right? Um, and so I think the pivotal moment for it is I, I, I uh, there was a, a magazine at the time. I'll, I'll give you a, a little history on this. There was a magazine uh, at the time uh, that came out uh or that, that it, it was a retro first person shooter magazine mm -hmm. now I'll, I'll this is not me saying they're good now there's a story involved that i that i'm willing to mention um but e1m1 magazine my friend or I, I say friend now but like the, the guys that were involved in that magazine uh it, it's a retro first person shooter magazine that that looks at new stuff and looks at old stuff and and i was like this is pretty cool because i grew up reading like uh I grew up reading like CGM and uh, and PC Gamer and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like buying those magazines and getting those demo CDs and taking them home and seeing Coconut Monkey and all this stuff. And and so I Coconut I Monkey. This magazine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. Okay. I'm old. Well, um, no, I I've just never heard. Uh, oh my! I've gosh, never heard of a magazine called Coconut Monkey. No. It was he was their mascot, man. You oh. put the CD in, and then Coconut Monkey would come out, and he'd do like this racist voice a little bit, <laughs> like this Jamaican thing, and and it was like, and and nobody questioned it because it was Coconut Monkey, and then right. he'd be like, you click these things, and you get like demos that you could play, and and so like okay. I grew up with, with that, yeah. and so there's this in print magazine, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is pretty dope, mm -hmm. and I look at it, and I go on, I had to go on this stupid vacation. With yeah, I hate I'm vacations. My, yeah. Well, it's my <laughs> vacations. It was with my. It was at my father-in-law's. Okay. And All and right. uh, and yeah. so I'm with him. Beside, he's coming to the house this weekend. Uh, yeah. So I'm with them. Uh, and he, and and the and I'm on their Discord, and I get a message from this guy Zach, who he's one of the founders of it, and we're just chatting, and and uh, and he knows I'm a streamer, but uh, like. We're just kind of chatting, and and he's like, "Hey, man, do you want do you want this game?" And I'm like, "Oh, I'm on vacation this week." Uh, and he's like, "Oh, why don't I send you?" A I was like, "I'm bored on vacation, and I don't have my computer." And he's like, "Why don't I send you a bunch of magazines?" So he sent me all the digital copies oh. of E1M1, and and that was just very kind. That's unexpected too. Um, why don't I just send you a bunch of magazines since you're on yeah. vacation? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Uh, it's cool. Man. It's cool. It's and very so cool. And friends. Yeah, and. And so that friendship just, you know, it's, it's one of these interesting things, right? Like, um, friendship in, in places cascades into other friendships because it's like people start seeing you talk to this guy and they see this other guy talking to you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and so through that, just natural connections, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm beginning to be friends with some of these guys who make these games. Um, and they talk to me and they're kind and a few other publishers, uh, this publisher Digirati, uh, they put out a game and, and, uh, their, their social guy, Trey is really, really kind. And we've chatted. And so we're just, you know, I'm chatting in these circles and now Zach's chatting with me. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then, um, and then just kind of, it's really, weird. I always, I always, I always message these guys. Um, and I just thank them for, I, I'm always like, Hey dude, thank you for letting me sit at the cool guy table. Like, like it feels like that. Cause I wasn't one of them, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I was not in their, in their group and, and they just included me so kindly. And, um, and it's like, they, they, yeah, they just let me, they let me be part of their, their group and didn't expect anything back from me. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we just started becoming friends and I started looking at opinion or looking at these games and enjoying, 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 just being a fan. Well, yeah, it sounds and like then, a more organic friendship than a business relationship. I think yeah, that's the, that's it, the distinction it, it, with all of these guys. And, and, and then it's like, I guess one of the pivotal one, there's all these like pivotal events, right? Like, and they all cascade into each other. And, uh, and one time, Zach was like, Zach was like, Hey, we're going to do this, uh, this game jam. Do you want to be a judge? And I'm like, yeah, that sounds fine. That sounds cool. And so we do this game jam, like where people, you know, make, they spend a month making games and, uh, and, and I get to do this game jam with these guys, uh, where, where we're rating stuff. And then he's like, okay, cool. Do you want to write, you want to write an article? Uh, like just a, just a little blurb about with the one of your choice. And I'm like, yeah, sure. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and you know, I, I, I do the writing on it and it's, it's fine. I'm, I'm, I have, I have my wife to help me spell things right. And, uh, and, and, <laughs> and it's like, you know, I kind of do that and, um, I'm just kind of a fan, you know, I'm just a fan of all these people. And, and then, uh, after I wrote the article, you know, they're like, Hey, this looks like it could be good. Do you actually want to, you want to join up with us and, and be on staff? Oh. And I'm like, yeah, that might be cool, I guess. And then like a month later, that magazine erupted because the other founder kind of had a mental breakdown, uh. Uh, deleted the discord, oh. deleted the Kickstarter for a set of things. It was really dramatic and unfortunate. Huh. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to say it this way. I don't wish him the best. Um, I just will probably not think about him ever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it's, yeah. it's uh it's one of those things where like it, it was it was messy all the people involved in the whole the whole staff quit uh he ended up doing some silly stuff where he tried to kind of uh yeah. take the corpse of the magazine and make some money off of it oh, still wow. and and yeah it was just kind of ugly and nasty and and so what ends up happening through through all of that uh is is you know i'm i i hate to say it this way um because you could just say it. that's the funniest. No, 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 no. Funniest I'm, like, I'm, to... I'm in the mid, in, I'm in the middle of all this stuff, and mm-hmm. I'm kind of growing in. Uh, renown's the wrong word. Um, rapport, but, maybe. But people are, yeah. Rapport is probably better. Uh, that's probably probably a little a little more accurate. I'm growing in rapport with all these people, and and uh, and I'm getting a little more known. And so that magazine falls apart, and I get hit up by by Zach again, and he says, mm-hmm. "Hey, here's the deal. Um, I'm just going to do a new magazine." It's like. Do you want to just come on as one of the one of the staff? So I'm, I'm so I'm writing for them and I'm enjoying it greatly and mm-hmm. and uh, and and in the middle of all that, it's like there's so much stuff going on during this time period for me uh, because at the same time, okay, I'm gonna say a thing that people are gonna think is stupid. No, streamers are gonna think is stupid. Okay, streamers are gonna think this is so dumb and they are so dumb, dude. Oh my gosh, you know how everybody's like, know your value, know your value. I uh, is that a recent thing that's that like people a, say? No, I mean that people are always like, okay, no, how, like don't do work for free, don't do this for free, don't sure. do, do that yeah, for free. Fair enough. Like, like uh, sometimes it's really good to do work for free, um, <laughs> like really good. Uh, so during this whole time period, uh, and I don't know when I started doing this. Um, I have no idea when I started. Like, I, I, I would have to look back at receipts to do this. Uh, oh, no, I know what it is. I know how this happened. Um, okay, so in the middle of all of this, yeah. as I'm falling in love, uh, right before the magazine... So the, the magazine... Th- I'll finish the magazine thought, and then I'll tell you what's going on. I know <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. all scattered, okay? No, it's okay. So the magazine, it's okay. I'm, I'm, writing for Relo- I'm writing for Reload Magazine now. Yeah. Reload Magazine's amazing. Um, it's so good. I cannot tell you how proud of this stuff I am, dude. Yeah. I... I, um, I somehow am a really good writer. Well, like, and that's are a, you that's a really are you humbling thing? Are you me. good at math by chance? No. Again, no, you're not. You're, but you are very logical. This is the interesting thing because I, I and you are very articulate. I would see you as a good writer, no problem. Um, because when I have, I've uh, last time I watched you play Raft, that game. No one wanted to make me play Raft less than you have, and I didn't really <laughs> want to play Raft at all in the first place. But you also had very good reasons for it. I remember you came to the ending, and then you gave this uh, 20, 30 minute monologue about why the, what the game that's, did wrong. You're like, hey, they probably, should be proud of what they've done. The, my wife, my wife would probably is probably nodding heavily right now and disgust. Uh, oh, she my likes monologues the game. Are, oh no, no, my monologues are too damn long. Oh, they're great. Uh, drives drives her insane. Yeah. Uh, I just have to remind people or my remind my wife that people don't live with me. Uh, <laughs> she's the only one who does. Uh. Well, that's, that's the thing too. Is it's like when you are reviewing a game on the fly and you're not writing it down because when you write something down, you can edit it, you can make the thought better, you can expand on it, and then you can give a finished, concise product. When you're when you're talking, you have to do that all real time, and there is going to be an inevitable process of editing, re-editing, or adding on, uh-huh. and and being like, oh, I didn't quite say that right. Let me add a little bit more on, and then that it's a feedback loop in there and stuff. But no, mm-hmm. you did, you did it really well. There's a lot of good points in that. You told me exactly what was good about the game and what wasn't from your perspective, which a lot of people have a tough time doing. So I liked it. But anyway, I, I always thought that, yeah, no, yeah, of course you could be a, a good I think writer. The, the, the humbling thing for me is is I was very bad in school. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had a 1.86 GPA. Uh, is that, like uh, I, how does that work? Because we don't have those until uh, college, D, university. D's. D's, D's, yeah. D's. Yeah. Passing. Oh, good for you. What is that water jug? Is that a fish? 
Man, yeah, it, okay, it glubs <laughs> it, when you drink out of it. It's not a va- okay. It's not a vase, dude. Yeah. Okay, uh, yes. it's my his his name. His name. <sighs> his name is Danny Danny Glubber. Danny Glubber. Um, God damn. It. Glubber. Glubber. Yeah, I Glubber. get it. I get it. So when you drink it, okay, listen, just listen. Shh, shh, shh. Oh, I. Uh. <laughs> it glugs, although it did just splash me. Uh, yeah, it's like it vomited in your mouth. No, well, I mean, it's refreshing. That's uh, a yeah, that's a that's a fun so, way to so drink I, your I water. Was very, very. I was very bad in high school. Um, I just <laughs> mostly because I didn't care. Just gonna um, ignore the fish. Okay, yeah, sure. Continue yeah, with your with your high school. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so I was really bad at high school, and and so um so I think it's mostly a surprise to me. Yeah. That 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 I found something that I'm good at right that i feel confident i'm good at and that i'm proud of uh and that others confirm and say this is good Mm -hmm. um it's mostly um because i don't yeah i mean i i don't think the ability to how do i say this um so where somebody else might identify the ability to express a position Mm -hmm. um as, as a, as a sign of intelligence, I don't necessarily think it is. I think a lot of it comes from the ability to, uh, to honestly, um, evaluate your own position, uh, as far as like, like there's a, there's a degree of, of probably expressing a position Mm -hmm. has a degree of humility involved in it. Right. Mm -hmm. And humility comes from realizing you're not very good at life in general. Um, (laughs) like everybody else it's just you're aware and so when i look at at my ability to express it, i don't go oh that's a sign of jared intelligence i go that's a well, sign yeah. of honesty maybe like yeah well yeah i'm i'm dumb about a lot of stuff so i got to be careful like i got to be careful what i say and how to express it so i have to take my time so i'm accurate because i do think stupid things and i want to make sure they're not stupid okay and so that's a good rule so i think that that's that's connected to it and so when when you know this writing thing i do now mm-hmm. um I think a lot of it is connected to that. Side note, we launched our Kickstarter yesterday, or uh, a couple days ago, 24 hours. We hit 200% on our Kickstarter. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. Oh, dude, such a such a cool thing. Good, um, good, us. good, great. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll get to the Kickstarter in a second. Let me go back to, to what you were talking about first. Um, okay, and then okay. also the fish, because I want to ask about that. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then why why do you think it was that you didn't do good in school? Because I, I don't see that as necessarily the case. I see the ability... Mm-hmm. I understand the honesty component. If you are honest with yourself and honest with others, it is easier to decipher your thoughts or translate them into words or however people think. Some people think in words, some mm-hmm. people think in, in images. The more honest with yourself you are, the less filters you have to contend with in order to articulate a point. So I think there is something there. However, I don't think that's all it is for you because I think there is a, uh, quite a depth to what you are saying whenever you speak about something, um, wherever that comes from, whether it's speculation or it's a, it's a deep feeling. And I also know you're very hardworking. You can tell just by how you conduct your stream. And so the question would be, well, I would see that as, okay, if you're in school, at the very least, if you're not smart and you are hardworking, you will get more than Ds generally. But coupled on to the, couple on to that, the fact that well, maybe it was this. Maybe did you develop this honesty later in life, or was it you were always this way? Um, so a lot of it. So, so this is one of those things, right? Like whenever I talk about, uh, whenever I talk about religious perspective, I understand that people have different worldviews, right? And we work out of different dictionaries. We th- different things are. I think one thing is true. Somebody else thinks another thing is true. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, <clears throat> I always, whenever I preface talking about like why I think certain things about life. I always recognize um, that, or I always I always try to preface it by being like, "Listen, I know when I say these things, um, a lot of the, okay. Have you ever have you ever been at a, have you ever been to dinner with with a Christian and uh, and and they and they want to talk to you about uh, about Jesus mm-hmm, like like mm-hmm. you think like you think he's real, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you don't think he's real." But they're going to talk to you about Jesus, mm. you, like you don't, you, and 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 it's there's always this awkwardness to it, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like they're trying to they're trying to uh, take this this assumed position of dominance, uh, and people I say Christian because I'm about to discuss that, but a lot yep. of people do that with a lot of things. Yes, yes, um, yeah. And just so an whenever easy I example. have conversations about my uh, about my beliefs, 
I, I always preface it by being like, listen, I know people don't think these things, right? Like, I know people, I, I know that they don't. And so my goal isn't to be like, all right, guys, I'm going to talk to you about this and convince you that Jesus is real. <laughs> like, I think he is, you think he is, and I have specific reasons I think so, and I think there's historical validity to those things. And, <laughs> and, and But my goal is not to be like, all right, everybody, church time, let's convert you. <laughs> um, but, but my... I began to change when when I began to uh, to experience belief in general in in my now given a lot of my beliefs have changed specific doctrines and stuff but in general my my big life changes happened when I was 13 when I started to value uh, when I started to value honesty in my uh, I think I remember my, that from your story in, in my life ago. yep. Yeah, like I'm so I'm 13 and I just and and I and I hear a thing and I go, "Wait, I think Jesus might be real." And that changes my reality because that means that like there's certain expectations that should be in line and there should be consistency in my life and so I start to change things, right? And here's the here is the deep irony to this discussion about grades. That's when my grades dropped. Really? <laughs> because and I think Part of it is because my parents weren't like, yo, Jared, what's going on? Uh, I just became obsessed with with uh, with church culture and with my church friends and music. I started doing rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, and, and we started to do all of that stuff. And so my priorities got massively shifted. And so when it was time to do homework, too bad. I'm 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 doing this other thing. Yes. And 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 so so I became I became to act I began to academically fail around that time. And there is there is I don't look at that and go oh man shame on me. <laughs> I go okay you know like my priorities just shifted, dude. And I and and yeah like like uh, th I guess that kind of looks bad, but at the same time like it also kind of makes sense because a yes. massive shift in, in worldview and priorities. And me being a 13-year-old who didn't know how to balance, yeah, um, yeah. like, my day-to-day -day life. Because worldview shifts are hard, dude. Oh, yeah. They, I mean, it will just flip your world upside down. And it did for me. And I just didn't have the structure in place to help me maintain uh, schooling and grades and stuff like that. Because, you know, my sister's running around pregnant and my, mm -hmm. uh, and, and my, you know, everybody else is busy with other stuff and, and I'm not doing drugs. So my mom's cool with me kind of doing whatever. Right. Yes, good. Um, <laughs> and so, so yeah, it was kind of one of those things where like that's and and, uh, and so, yeah, when I, when, you know, we talk about me being bad at school, mm -hmm. that that's really what I mean. Like I, I, I wasn't, you know, I'm not, I'm not being a bad kid. I'm just not doing my damn homework. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Well, that's interesting thing as well is is why well, I, I guess you have to rescind part of what you said earlier when you said uh, you don't consider yourself smart uh because and then you have the my gpa was 1.8 and it's like okay well you also weren't yeah, really and it's like the focusing GPA doesn't matter yeah yeah it, it, and you were you, you you were obsessing about something else now do you find yourself to be fixated and obsessive about whatever you're interested in and then the rest kind of fades away or are you someone who can balance that a lot better now I love multitasking. Uh -huh. Like I, I here's what I found is best for me. Right, I I perform my best when I have too much to do. Oh, and I think it's because I don't waste time. Yep. Like like I sit down for forty five minutes and I have to write. Um, I'm, I am okay. Let me see how I can say this. Uh, so last night. So I'm I'm uh I can't I can't expound upon this. I'm gonna say this and I cannot expound upon this because of NDA stuff. Okay. Uh I am I I'm hosting ask. a I'm hosting a, and if anybody in chat asks me any details, I'm not saying anything. I refuse to say anything. Some of you will write will write it and I will lie. And some of you will write the <laughs> wrong thing and I will lie. <laughs> uh, but I'm 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 hosting and and uh, and producing a major gaming show, uh, a gaming event that is unannounced but has a deep history. Mm -hmm. I've been asked to do it. It's a huge honor. I'm excited about it, yada, yada, yada. So I sit down last night, and I, I don't have time to do anything, right? Um, like, I got nothing. I got, I got no time, but I have 45 minutes. And so I sit down, and I make a, I make a, a full production document. It's pretty quick. And yeah, and it's it's nice, it's beautiful, it's form and because I don't have time to screw around, right? Like it's it's just I I operate most um most efficiently when I have no time. And so I keep myself busy and the time that I do have that's free, 
um, the actual free time. Rather, I think this is a thing that that um, I think this is the most valuable thing that I that that I have learned in my life. Um, set set the only thing you should ever feel good about sacrificing. You know, the only thing you have the right to sacrifice is your own recreation. That might be the right way to say it. Um, mm-hmm. Like, like I am, I'm really, really busy, but I don't play video games for fun anymore. Mm-hmm. Like everybody always wants to, um, everybody always wants to uh, still relax. Mm-hmm. I don't, but, but it's like, well, if I do that, like my, I'm pulling it's like people always people are always like, oh, I'm really busy, so I'm gonna, I, you know, I need to relax, so I'm gonna play a video game. And it's like, well, why are you playing a video game for fun? You're, like, why are you playing a video game for fun? Mm-hmm. Like, there's other things you could do. Well, I need to relax. Well, do you? Like, do you actually need to relax? And some people do really, really good with that. Some people need it. I mm-hmm. think I would assume I don't. Like, I, I just, uh, I, you know. Well, okay. So tell me, ca- tell me about that. And, because I, generally I would look at you and I would say, okay, if you're working all the time and you're not resting, because you also have a family and you have a kid and I see yep. cute videos pop up every now and then, um, you have a lot to do, but you can, you can m- make a metaphor about working out. You work mm-hmm. out and you work out and you work out, you need to recover. Like you need to rest. You need time for your muscles to repair. Um, otherwise you won't get any stronger. In fact, you'll start breaking down further and further and further. So that's mm-hmm. what a lot of people would call so burnout. So here, here, is, here is how I do this. Right. If I need sleep, I sleep. If I need... So 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 here's what I mean. A lot of people would be like, I'm so busy, man. I just need to relax. And then they sacrifice sleep for what they think is mental or what they think is mental health. Right. And that's what that's specifically what I mean. Thank you for helping me uh, to to say this right. Um, a lot of people are really tired and really busy, and they and rather than sleeping like their body needs, mm-hmm. they they do personal recreation. Mm-hmm. I would rather give up, and I do. I have one event that I do each week, and the guys in chat are talking about it. I have one three-hour time period. I play games with the guys that I'm part of this community with once a week, and it's important to me because they're there, and I like I like seeing them and being involved, and and it's it's on my calendar. That's you know that's my that's my only time. Right. But but a lot of people I know. They go to work, they do all these things, and then they get home and they're like, man, I'm so tired, but I, I got to take care of my mental health. I'm just going to enjoy myself. And it's like, or sleep, because you're a physical being. Just freaking sleep instead of play that game, idiot. Like, like it's more beneficial. Okay, so then the and next question would be, you've, have you never had a problem sleeping at all? You, if you decide I, to go to sleep, I you just pass out? A lot of issues sleeping, actually. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so how do how I do these two have, things go together? I generally will take well if I if I get behind and I'm tired, um, I take one nap a month. <laughs> like okay, <laughs> like I know that sounds stupid, and, and but and 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 again, this isn't this is one of those things where I don't have this expectation of other people, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but my my life is prioritized in a way where I have my family that's most important, which means uh, which means I need to get up and see my little girl before I come down to the office, right? Mm-hmm. I gotta spend time with her because my dad didn't get to spend time with me, so I gotta spend time with my little girl, right? Uh, so I'm getting up in the morning, almost like uh, five days a week. I generally get up. I let my wife sleep a couple hours on those days, and I get up with my daughter. Nice of you. Uh, then I come to work. I get off work. I go upstairs. I do what they need me to do. I hang out with them. Uh, and then if I have work that I have to do, I come to the office and I do that for a few hours and then I go sit next to my wife and I hold her hand for a little bit and then I go to sleep instead of staying up after work and playing games. Okay. And so I, around what time is that usually? Uh, 11 to 12. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. And then, uh, my kid wakes up anywhere ranging from seven to six in the morning. That's nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, so generally six hours of sleep and, 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 and what I've found is, like it helps not drinking a lot. That's another thing that people fall into, right? Like, uh-huh. uh, like, yeah, it, it, sleep is multiplied when you don't drink, uh, or it's not divided when you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. like your sleep gets, gets divided the quality when you drink in, is better when you don't drink. Yeah. 
And so those things matter. And I'll have phases where I'll, you know, I'll have drinks and then I'll be like, nope, all right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not touching it because I need to catch up on my sleep and I need these hours to matter. Mm -hmm. Um, And so what it amounts to is, is uh, the only thing I'm so busy in general that the only thing I can give up, the only thing I have the right to give up is my own recreation. Okay. That's it. Okay. There's nothing else. I can't, because if I take away from anything else, I'm either taking away from uh, from my contract work, which is stupid because that makes me money. Yes. I'm taking away from stream, which is stupid because I owe these viewers my time and enjoyment and energy. Because of the because the su- because the money they subs and, and yeah. tips and 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 even the kindness and enjoyment I am I'm I I'm in debt to them okay like uh, like I I'm I'm 100 in debt to them so I need to spend my time here, um, and and I can't take away from my family, and so what's left to take who's left to take from just me I'm the only person left to take from mm-hmm. and so rather than being like well it's my right to have time to myself well. I don't know. I don't care that much, right? Like, I'll just, I'll just, it's I'll just, a, uh, it's an interesting stop thing. Video games. So, I have a lot of questions. Okay. Well, there's one thing to be said as soon as you have a kid, your life is no longer your own. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, that's, that's a big part of it. And I guess that's where a lot of people would, you have to make that differentiation for a lot of people that are listening or watching. I think that's very important. The second thing you said is like, okay, well, look, um, I am a biological being and I need to take care of my biological needs. And I, those are the things that you do not want to sacrifice. Did you get another yes. leather armor? Uh, no, it's no. Splint. I don't need more than I just one leather armor is enough, but we oh, do okay. have six food and that's kind of a big deal. Great. Okay. So you want to prioritize your biological needs, your sleep, your rest over, um, your recreational needs. So general enjoyment. Yes. And of course you can always find enjoyment in whatever you do, or you can find enjoyment in your time with your kid. So that's, mm-hmm. that's a, that's a, that's a more negotiable one. Yeah. Um, now the question would be, uh, well, I, I, I feel like you're a fairly extroverted individual. Is that correct? Uh, in, it's a tough that's one, hard. Huh? Um, no, I, I, this is, this is going to sound contrary because, because, um, because of what people see. Right. Right. Um, I, yeah, I think Ty, Ty and chat just said only by necessity. Um, ah, look at that. They know you. I huh? don't do very well in public. Oh, really? Um, I struggle with eye contact. Yeah. Um, like immensely. I, and, 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 you know, this, the, COVID being a thing really didn't help that at all. Oh yeah. Um, but I, I struggle with making contact, um, like eye contact. I struggle, um, with patients, um, yeah. Social engagements in real life are very, very tiring. Okay. So then I'd say you're introverted for sure. So this, this makes this question even more, I guess, important because i i can understand that um which is also interesting because it's like okay i don't know how much a lot of my friends a lot of people that i'm friends with um have some form of adhd or some form Uh of like mild autism asperger something you know something there and it's it's always like it always enhances them in a way like Uh really like they're they're very hyper their thoughts are like hyper focused a lot of the time. So it's very interesting to talk with them. It's very enjoyable too. But then the downside is they struggle in certain situations. Uh-huh. So it's a trade off. Now, the question I would have with that is okay, since you're not super extroverted and I would say you're pretty introverted, um, with me, I can do about three or four hours of creative work before mm-hmm. I, before my. It's like, you know how you have a muscle failure? It's before my mind starts to fatigue quite a bit. Uh That's why I limit a lot of these talks. Um, And that being said, even when I would stream, I would stream and I'm so immersed in the streaming, like I'm so connected to everything because I I focus quite a bit, like my focus is very hyper-tuned. That when I break the stream, I almost need like a like a 10, 20, 30 minutes to just recover and recalibrate to the world around me, even though there's no one Uh here. Um, Same thing with my, with my breathing and same thing with other people. Yeah. So the question being, so they, they do say this, you generally don't want to do more than four hours of creative work a day. You're going to experience diminishing returns. 
how do you manage that without fatiguing? Like, have you figured something out or something you, like a Goggins has, you know, he's figured dopamine out, not intellectually, mm -hmm. but somehow through his experience. Um, have you rewired yourself in some way or something to make yourself capable of that work, despite not being necessarily attuned to that? Um, so I think I... I have a sense of um, so okay. Let's let's take the example. I get I got off stream right. Mm -hmm. Like I've been streaming for I've been streaming for um, let's just say twelve hours, right? Right. Like I've been streaming for twelve hours, and and that's that. I find that to be very easy for me uh, because <laughs> yeah. it's it is. Um, it's just here. I'm in a room alone. I got a camera. I got people in chat. I know they're real people. I'm excited about that. Uh, but but it's different than having eyeballs that I'm making contact with and uh, and and stuff like that. Um, and I'm just able to uh, to non I, I you know I just speak. It's non filtered and all of this stuff, right? Um, and so I'm doing 12 hours. And you would think after 12 hours, like I'm done, right? Mm -hmm. um, I get off work, and I have. To my family, I have a moral obligation that they get better than everybody else got. Mm -hmm. um, and that's challenging, but I really like my wife. That's good. That's and a... I really like my kid. Right. Um, that doesn't mean my kid's not challenging. Um, holy crap. Um, <laughs> she started calling me Mrs. Dad recently. Oh, great. Uh, which is very funny. Yeah. Uh, she knows it's hilarious. It's so funny, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, like it, it kills me. I, I, it just makes me so happy. Uh, this little voice, hey, Mrs. Dad. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But, but they, they, d it is, it is my moral obligation to take care of their needs. And that does not stop at their financial needs. Mm hmm. Like, like they need food, mm -hmm. but they need more than that because people have greater needs. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I think that that is, that that's where I, um, I think that's probably where it is. And what that does is it, let's say hypothetically I get up and I'm exhausted, right? Like I'm not doing good. Mm -hmm. Um, I go and slam some caffeine. Ah, caffeine. I'll just... I'll just I'll just drink some caffeine. Yeah. And then and then I'm I'm you know, I'm okay for a time and then I just make sure and this is where I think the denial of self uh of self uh, recreation recreation matters is because when I get tired then it's time for bed. Mm -hmm. Instead of when I get tired, well, I need some me time now. Mm -hmm. And it's like okay, that's that's really going to damage uh, that's going to physically be a bad idea, right? To the rest of uh, your life, yes. Yeah, but yeah. I can borrow. I can borrow for myself with the use of caffeine, mm -hmm. uh, and and give it to my and give that energy to my family, mm -hmm. and that's okay. And and uh, and and yeah, that's. I mean, that's how I. That's how I do it. I know that sounds well silly, uh, and I know there's people who may have things that they don't like about that. No, because, no, oh, I, you know, I can. I can. You, but I can admire it. Like I, I think that's a very good thing to do. Is well, I think that's very that's a very admirable thing to do to prioritize your family, and at the same time also function very well in your career. the The concern I would have there, um, and maybe this isn't a concern for you, like maybe everything is completely okay, but I would be upset with myself if I didn't say it because I would feel like I, I would be potentially leaving out good information at the cost of offending you or someone else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. which I don't think I have to worry about with you because I think you're a respectable no. person. Um, but there's a doctor, his name is Dr. Gabor Mate, um, and he's done a ton of work. He's, uh, he's done a ton of work in palliative care, and he's written many books. One of his books is mm -hmm. when, when the Body Says No. Yeah. Uh, are you familiar with him at all? Uh, no, I'm not actually. I'm not. No. But, okay. But, so but feel free if you to, ever, feel free to if you ever get, yeah. yeah, if you ever get time to to look at his stuff, it's it's very very good. So he has always focused on the fact that in medicine they do not seem to factor in emotions um, in relation to diagnoses. They separate the mind and body mm -hmm. quite a bit. So he did a bunch of research and he found with a lot of diseases, um, like for example breast cancer or ALS, there is a certain personality type that is associated with that 
disease. So for example, mm. ALS, he found, uh, I think it was within both, both uh, sexes, that people who generally could not say no to things or wouldn't say mm -hmm. no, they're very hard worker, they're very high functioning, but they would not say no to things. Well, what would eventually happen is they would get ALS and that was the consistency, the personality type that they wouldn't say no. And then he has all this other stuff of other diseases. And the theory behind it, and it, the science behind it all, all works out, is that when you feel emotions, the emotions are felt within your body, right? Th mm -hmm. Through chemical, inter uh, chemical reactions and, and interactions. And so what you can do is, of course, you can numb that. So you can say, you can say, oh, I don't feel that. Or you can make it like, I, like your brain has all these mechanisms and functions where it's like, okay, right now it's not good for me to feel that. And you can tie it into yeah. survival. So I'm not going to. And that works on a short-term basis. But on the long-term, what happens is that behavior is repeated and repeated and repeated. And then you have these chemical interactions going on in your body that you aren't aware of. Yeah. And so yeah, what yeah. will happen is that just because you aren't aware of it doesn't mean your body doesn't respond to it, which will result in some sort of problem or ulcer or disease or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, but there's a there's a this really interesting stuff and it's very valuable. Basically, it is that, and I, I'm not saying like uh, this is this is the distinction I, I want to make. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's very, it is very important to take care of yourself because if, if you don't, oh, yeah. your body will give you no choice. That's what I think. Well, and here's here's the thing about this. Let in, me in a preemptive response, I make the distinction I, first. I know. Oh yeah, yeah. Please do. Okay. Please so do. the distinction is that a lot of people talk about mental health and stuff like that, and then the way I. I don't really see that as actual mental health. I see a lot of people talk about mental health and they have no idea what they're talking about. And most of the time, it's it's an excuse to be pathetic. And that yeah. might sound very harsh. Um, I can I can but, understand. But I, there are cases. Yeah. There are there are cases where where that can be identified. I could understand that mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And it's not all the cases, but it's a lot of that. And I think it leans more in that direction, especially in social media. Um, well, yeah, I was I was going to say in social media we are rewarded for uh, for weakness, uh, and it it makes us uh, very often desire to express weakness and and uh, and allow that weakness to kind of take root. It's an uh, incentive structure. Yeah. For, yeah, for yeah, yeah, being yeah. a, being a victim and being weak. Cause then people are like, Oh, let's take care of you. But yeah, with, with that, it's like, okay, well, fair enough. But then there's a, the actual, the actual mental health component, which is like, okay, like you said, you need enough sleep. Why do you need enough sleep? Well, there's chemical reasons. And as well as there are, there, are, there's the, your brain cleans itself. And then dreams are a way to reconcile a lot of things in your life and, and so on and so forth. The worry I would have is that, okay, you take care of your career, you take care of your family, mm -hmm. all very good things. Um, I'm not saying you should have necessarily recreation time because I, th I agree with you there. Like if, I have, I, I need me time. I don't mm -hmm. really think people need me time. Like once in a while, maybe it can be nice. It can be refreshing, but I don't think you necessarily need it. But I do think that you need something that caffeine can't solve over a long mm -hmm. period of time. So I am, I am in a, so I got two answers to that. Okay. I am in a very uh, unique position professionally. Right where my job is actually fun. So I'm always telling people, you don't have to love your job, right? That's why they pay you to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, one of the things people are after in recreation is fun, right? They hate everything else. They just want fun. I I am very, very, very blessed to have uh, a f like fun employment. Everything, I, everything I'm paid to do is fun. Mm-hmm. And that's unique, right? And so that's part of the empowering thing that allows me to, uh, <clears throat> because that does take care of a need in my life, right? Like mm -hmm. you should have been miserable. You need some. You need to enjoy something, right? Um, and so I, I legitimately and sincerely enjoy all of my professional endeavors. Um, the pride I get from writing feels good. The, <clears throat> the extreme pride I get from from evaluating a game, going over it, rewriting sections of it, and then seeing a final product, um, even though I don't get to tell people what games those are uh, because of NDA stuff, um, mm -hmm. the the joy, and uh, that is rewarding as hell. Then you have just standard, like, in the now fun. Like, I, dude, I play video games for, for like, the majority of my time. Mm -hmm. So that's fun. 
<clears throat> like, and I, I enjoy games. They have never been a job to me. The job portion of, of streaming is the energy portion, right? Okay. Like, like I separate that. Um, the job thing, the thing that is that needs work is to make sure that I catch myself if I'm if my energy is falling so that I provide a consistent experience for anybody. If they show up at hour three, I want it to be the same as they show up at hour 18 if I'm doing a long day. That's a difficult um, thing. Yep. That's a very difficult and, and, thing. And 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 I'm and I don't I, I'm successful at that in general. Um <clears throat> like that is that that's the work part to me. The enjoyment, I always enjoy what I'm doing. Um I because games are fun. Even if the game's not perfect, man, it's a game. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's a game like so there's that uh, then you also throw in the fact that I do understand the way I'm living life right now does have physical challenge or does I need physic I need to take care of myself physically uh, as well and so I make sure that I mean I'm honestly I'm healthier now than I've ever been in my life like we I joke around about a little bit of weight but dude I'm so freaking healthy right now compared to everything else great uh, I I actually sleep more than I, I mean, I can't believe I, when I started streaming, dude, I can't believe, I cannot believe how little I was sleeping. I was pulling three hours a night, every night mm -hmm. um, of sleep. And now I sleep six and that's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Good, like good that's insane. You. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like, I feel I'm a, I'm a new man, you know, mm -hmm. uh, every day I wake up a new man, but it's like, and so, so I do recognize that, the denying those things that are commonly uh, necessary for a positive human experience, although I think people balance them inappropriately, mm -hmm. um, I do have those and I'm pulling them from different locations. Uh, and so I do live an extremely regimented life, but it's a regimented life that is regimented to uh, to be filled with, or to, to, to be fulfilling in all the ways that like I feel like a life should be. Mm -hmm. Yum, yum. Does that change color? This is this is a pink ranger shaker. Weren't you you had orange? Oh, it is orange. Okay, I was it's like, just a little bit yeah. left. <laughs> I was impressed. Okay, good. Do you have more on that? Good. No, okay. I think that that's. I think that that's that. that so that kind of what ties into that, and this is something you said earlier, and this is something I wanted to ask you was, um, you specified earlier about the difference, or that you know there is a lot of utility in working for free. And so you were, oh, yeah, you, had, did, you had, I did mention that. yeah, you did. And there's a, you know, the, the whole know your value thing wasn't uh -huh. necessarily all it's chalked up to be. So I wanted to ask you, what is the different or where is the, the fine line between working for free and working for free intentionally and then uh -huh. being taken advantage of? And so I can give you, I can yeah. give an, I can give examples. Great. Um, so I, I run, I, I have, I have a thing I do, right? And, and I just mentioned it, but let me take a glove real quick. Yeah. I got to ask about that thing too. That's like the, that's the best gift. thing. Whoever gave this that to you, I don't know where they found that. It's really good. It's actually, I, when I got it, I thought it was a pot plant. Yeah. But it's a gurgle pot. It's more of a, you're <laughs> supposed to like have guests over and pour stuff into their cup. And then they're supposed to be like, oh, that's cute. Yeah. Yeah. Instead, you're just going to make out with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So this is what this is where I was. We were talking about like how, how over the past course of the past year, uh, I've started to get involved in a whole bunch of things, and a lot of them are associated associated with like classic FPS stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, um, the connection to all of this because I mentioned like like people always talk about how you shouldn't do stuff for free, mm -hmm. like like uh, like if uh, if somebody asks you to do do something, don't do it for free, man. Charge them. Like obviously, you know, unless it's a friend. Um, <clears throat> But I'll tell you over the last year, I so there's another thing I do that I talk about it, but I'm never I never talk about specifics, right? Um, because it's it's uh, it's very private stuff for people. A lot of it's on games that are currently being developed and 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 or unannounced or um, <clears throat> or the. So what I do is I I do these I do these evaluations, right? Uh, it's I'm the the proper way to talk about it would be. Uh, I will ev I evaluate I professionally evaluate products that uh, to to interpret like general customer perception right general player perception okay um, so the idea of um, of the average player as they play this game as they enter into this what is their experience what is off putting initially what is what is uh, like like you you're smoothing out the sheet 
Mm-hmm. You're 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 getting rid of the wrinkles because the because we live in this day and age where a wrinkle will distract somebody from seeing something very very cool, right? Um, and 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 so I do a lot of this work, and I got into it. Um, it's really interesting how I got into it. So there's I work with publishers. I work with several publishers. Uh, if you ever go to Steam, you might see. I randomly videos of me on steam. I record games like I'm playing it live and send it to them so that they can have a fake live thing. Oh, that's uh, nice. Yeah. Good idea really too. Nice. Yeah. People, so, so here's the thing. People used to do that for free. I charge for it. And, and the, so this is like, this kind of works the opposite. I, I'll, I'll explain it all, but like, right. Uh, <clears throat> so, so I got hit up by a company, mm-hmm. uh, a long time ago and they were like, Hey, we saw your stream. Uh, we're wondering if you would, uh, if you would stream live, uh, on steam and i'm like well i'm a twitch partner i can't technically technically the contract doesn't say that but twitch says it does but it doesn't Mm -hmm. uh and you just kind of have to go with it because it's amazon okay Um, (laughs) Okay. like it's i mean seriously i've done like like we've reviewed and it does not say you can't multi-stream but you can stream to other platforms according to the contract it just uh they read they read a section it wrong not to the letter um, Interesting. I had no idea. It's very, You're very, very thorough. You're very good at being thorough with things. Well, like we said, I, I sat down with Feckless, my manager, and I was yeah. like, what does this say? And he was like, that says exactly what it looks like it says. And it's like, well, why does Twitch like take people's partnership away for this? And, he's, and we're just like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. But then we watch him do it all the time to people. Yeah. So, so, so I was like, hey, I can't stream live for you. <laughs> and they're like, okay. And I was like, but how about this? I was like, I can provide a recording. That would be fine. Yep. And they're like, they're like, okay. Um, that sounds fine. And I was like, yeah, give me a hundred bucks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and they were like, they were just like, okay. All right. And yeah. I was like, I was like, wait a second. Hold <laughs> on. I can charge for this. And yeah. I have friends that like, you know, do that stuff for free and, and, uh, but, but not to a benefit because they're not refining. They're not doing anything They're for themselves. They're not mm-hmm. refining their technique. They're just recording a game and putting it up there. There's no benefit for them. Uh, the, they're literally being, they're literally, you know, providing a service. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so in that case, like, like that, so, so I start doing this stuff, right? And then eventually they hit me up and this is kind of how, our, how everything started for me. Uh, and, and I ended up creating a, creating my own, a, a job that I do regularly for people. Mm-hmm. Um, so this publisher hits me up and they're like, Hey, we got this new game. And they were like, we don't know what we think about it. Um, they're like, can you, can you put it up? From or can you play it for me or can you play it for us and give us give us thoughts and I was like yes absolutely I can so I load this game up and I go through it and I, and and I give them a full evaluation explaining like like here is where here are my concerns as a player and and the perspective that I have for that is yeah exactly Scarecrow Scarecrow saying a hundred for a marketing team is nothing which is true mm-hmm. uh, which is I, I actually I know I know the appropriate going rates for stuff and it's pretty crazy the, the way that the money marketing teams have right. Um, like it's really insane, um, but so like you know they hit me up and they're like, can you do this? And I was like, yeah. And I, and and I was like, I'm just gonna do it. And my thought was, I was like, you know what? This is kind of fun. I'm getting to see a game that's not out for a really long time. Nobody even knows this thing exists. And I and I start loading it up and I look at it and I'm like, oh, this is bad. Okay. <laughs> Like, this is really bad. And, and, and I'm like, well, why do I feel that way? And immediately I'm like, well, you know why I'm able to identify these bad things that are helpful and actionable is because my concern as a streamer is I need things to look and feel good to a viewer. And so if I load in, into a game and there's some stupid looking gun, everybody in chat's going to gonna identify that gun. Yep. They're not going to see the really cool mountain off in the distance that they were supposed to see. They're going to see the gun. Right. And they're going to mock it because that's what we do. Right. Yes. And, and I'm, hi- I'm hypersensitive towards that. Right. And so I, you know, I write up this percent, this, I write up this document uh, and it's really good. And then they're like, this is really helpful. And then they go and change their game. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wait, a, I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> it's like, okay, I get this. I was like, okay, so, so these were actionable. This was, this is more than just, uh, this is more than just like, some weird bug hunting QA like uh, and and so I'm talking to these guys and I was like I was like is this the thing people do for you and they're like no nobody's done this for us like oh like wow. outside of our development studio like we play these things we have guys doing things that are similar but they their understanding is one from with within the house mm-hmm. and they're familiar and I'm like okay so I see value in this. And so what I started doing is I have, you know, I, I, I start talking to a few other people and I start doing these things for a little while. I do them for free for people. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, 
and and part of that is is building both two things building building a uh, building an actual catalog of stuff that I've worked on, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 making sure that in my free work I treat it like real work, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I'm gaining I'm gaining I'm gaining uh, a resume on that, and then I'm gaining I'm getting better I'm getting a lot better at mm-hmm. it, and so eventually you know people like like now I get hit up by by various publishers and developers, and it, the question is is hey. We hear you do this thing, customer percept or general customer perception oh, evaluations. Cool. Yeah, and and uh, and what 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 do you want to charge us? And so now it's like okay, so we've seen you know within within these circles where people will share their information with each other. Where did you come up with that? Well, I worked with Jared, and so essentially I end up creating creating this other job. Yes, where I can where I can work for some money, and and so so I get to do a lot of these things. And so, dude, I will tell you, I. I like like doing doing work for free initially in those things is has has turned out to be one of the most valuable things that I've ever done. Right. Is is because it wasn't like it wasn't this arrogant, know your worth, you're good at this stuff, know your worth. It's like, yeah, but nobody knows that, dude. Right. Right. So like, we could we could amend that into if you do free work, make sure you are building something or developing something. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be for money, but you have to get something out of it in terms right. of, and it it could be it could be a, a develop develop like not necessarily you get something, but you build yourself as well. Did you you what happened? Oh, uh, there was a tr- the, there was no door in the room, so I had to find the door. Ah, uh, okay, um, <laughs> that looked very distressing for you. It, it was, it was. Um, okay, the but yeah, so it's like so I do that stuff now, and it's it's interesting. Um, it's interesting. It's really cool. You you uh, this is I see I very hold on I'm gonna sneeze. Maybe it's, <laughs> it's really funny because in game dev, yeah. in game dev, doing work for free is really common. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and that's, uh, it, it, you know, it's, that's why I say like, this is a thing that like, you know, streamers get mad about is the idea of doing free work. Uh, my friend Scarecrow says he volunteered for QA for wrath and now he's a full-time salaried executive producer for a game, uh, uh, a game director. I know. I know. My friend Rob, who's also in chat, did a bunch of free work. His entire coming up for uh, for uh, David Jaffe and for a bunch of other guys. Mm-hmm. And and uh, and you know Jaffe, the father of uh, Kratos. And and oh. now now Rob just his his particular game. Uh, oh. He got he got full publishing uh, and funding for his new game that he's working on. And and that is because of those connections. Yeah. With people because because he earned positioning and gained expertise and people knew and and so the benefits it's just really funny because like people people get so angry about the idea of of free work now if somebody asks you to do something for free that's a little different like mm. that's probably you, you probably need to evaluate that a little yeah bit. there's a, there's a but, big distinction there in terms of context because it yeah, sounds but, like but free work's not always bad work sometimes mm. free work is is highly beneficial and and i've learned that over the course of the last year is is doing stuff um doing stuff f- with uh you know with people that that increase or that are good for them that are good for me uh and then identifying those moments where it is a where it is wise to charge and not just being like well I do all, I you know I do all these things for free no absolutely not a, mm. a publisher hits me up and says and says hey can you can you do this evaluation for us I'm going to charge a publisher Mm-hmm. But if a friend hits me up and says, "Hey, man, I'm kind of stumped. I'm I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble with the start of my game, and I don't know how to I don't know how to organize this. I'm gonna put some hard work into uh, into that for that friend." No, oh, come on! <laughs> this is, this is a, it's really funny to watch um, you think through things and figure out uh, how to answer questions, and also and also ask questions while playing this game that looks like nothing but apparently is is very complex you were killed by a centaur had so much stuff in it even though you had your leather armor huh yeah i had three leather armors technically none of them were blessed but it's fine i'm fine well that's the Um, thing you know that's that's what we were talking about earlier i'm sure people are happier that you actually died here than no, they want. They actually want me to beat this oh, game. Oh, do they? We were not. We were not very far in. Uh, this game is pretty long. Ah, I was. Uh, I, in my understanding, I was approximately a fifth through it. So okay, well, jeez, I, I have so many questions, but we'll have to cut a, cut a lot of them. So yeah, how right. how is it? So you you said you recognize how. <clears throat> 
how you're very hypersensitive to how a viewer will see what you're doing and then what they'll do as consequence to that. So mm-hmm. then how do you reconcile that with this game? Because well, all I see are boxes and dots, boxes and dots. And it, it uh-huh. seems incredibly complex, but I'm assuming most people just see boxes and dots. So I, I the interesting thing is, so if we weren't having this conversation, yeah, and we were, and we were talking about like, and and you and you just popped into my stream. So there's a couple intriguing things happening, right? One, you have you have somebody intently looking at a game like it's from, you know, 1983. Um, it is in the retro category, mm-hmm. and so uh, in general, anybody new who's not connected to this community. Um, they are going to have generally uh, an affection for older things, and so there's an intriguing uh, there's an intriguing like pull there, uh, because this is clearly really retro. And if they're in the retro Twitch category, they're going to be like, "What the heck is this?" Um, mm-hmm. And and so as they come in, I'm I'm very very careful generally as I'm playing this to be highly expressive about everything I do, <laughs> okay. so that the so that the complexity is you know there. Um, and if people are part of this community already and they've seen me do other stuff. Um, in general, they're going to have the, they're going to have the understanding that, uh, that I like complexity and that I, there's just kind of a a certain temperament I have with this stuff. And so it would, it probably is telling, um, this is, this has been, so, so it is actually really purposefully selected one. I really want to beat it. Uh, but two, it's. Dude, it's in the retro category, and the retro category right. is highly farmable. So you've, like for, you found for newer viewership, or you <laughs> like, you've deliberately uh, found exceptions to the to the general rule of yes. Okay, yeah. all right, that makes sense. Okay, how's your throat doing? I know you're coughing. Oh, uh, I'm I fine, also I'm know fine, you have fine. you have a throat injury, right? I got a glove <clears throat> jug. A glove jug. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about too. So you do this thing, and I've been watching this where you tweet every once in a while, maybe it was once a week or something. Uh-huh. Tweet something that you. You have uh, the, to tweet it. You have we, to. So we haven't done this in a little bit. We kind of put it on hiatus because it was getting. Uh, it was getting it bad. It was no. It wasn't getting bad. It was um, the the interest waned a little or creativity waned a little bit, and that's uh and and it's funny because we, I actually my uh, my my I say mods, but they're my friends. They're guys that have known my I've known for huge chunks of my life from elsewhere. Um, Ty just wrote it in chat. He said it's become too hard to embarrass me. Um, <laughs> Okay. And so we're kind of taking a, a temporary break, break from it. Yeah, I've become immune to embarrassment. Um, yeah. And and so yeah, it's just. Uh, but we were doing that for a while, and it was very funny because for a while it was like I really don't want to do this. And then eventually I was like, okay, here's the thing. Part of these communities I'm connected to, like there's some guys who who love stupid memes, mm-hmm. and and I've become much closer friends with them. And and as they kind of gave me a real quick speed run through the embarrassment thing. Okay. Um, like with these things would get posted and they'd be embarrassing and these massive Twitter accounts would tweet them out and I'd get, you know, I'd get a thousand likes on a picture on a, on an embarrassing picture of me. And it's like, <laughs> and, and so they just kind of, I, I became immune to it over the course of the last like six months and, and it's made it a lot less fun for people. Uh-huh. Um, and so, <clears throat> so we don't want to waste our time on stuff. That's just not fun. Right. Fair enough. Like, yeah, you, so things have to die. Stopped. But yeah, that was a thing for a bit, mm-hmm. um, and it was it was a it was a good thing. But they made me too strong. They made you too strong. I, that's a that's an unintended consequence. You get too good at something, and it becomes not fun. It's a weird yeah. thing how how Twitch works like that. Uh huh. You know, it's like oh, now he's too good now. It's like oh, we don't yeah. want to watch that. Um, cool, great. So glub glub. I want to know about that because that that okay, popped so up there all, is, all, there a while is, ago. There is this freaking. You can't play it on Twitch. There is there's this gay dating sim. Oh, great. Like di- gay graphic novel, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like super super intense. And there is just one secret ending and we didn't know this was what it was from. Well, is there is there full blown the ma- nudity? Is oh, there- there's yeah, there's oh, okay. there's insertion. It's like it's it's intense. Yeah, no, it's not dream. Is it No, I forget what it's called. Uh It's not Dream it, Daddy, is it? No. No, I don't think it is. It's uh no, it's not. Shoot, if Ty can t- Ty, if you want to look up the name for it, that'd be funny, so I could know it. But uh, but one of the secret characters, um, the secret character, uh, one of the secret endings is a guy ends up being with a fish, and so there's this picture, the ending picture, 
It's so funny, and we didn't know the context of it. It's just literally a guy laying with a fish, and the fish is the fish is whispering "glub glub" in his ear. And and my guys in in this community like decided to start making backgrounds with that in it. And the mm. rule was I had to tweet it, and it was like, oh my gosh, oh it's. <laughs> It's called coming out on top. Great. <laughs> good name. Very, very good. Really good name for yeah, the topic. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, it just kind of became a thing. And uh, it was really unfortunate because my, uh, my, I, I have this, this, these friends that are voice actors and, uh, and, and one of them hit me up and he was like, Hey, so we found out what the game is called. It's called coming out on top. And we, at this point we didn't realize it was super graphic, but they were like, <laughs> they were like, we should, we should just voice the whole thing. And they're like, do you want to come along and do this? And I was like, hell yeah. Do you voice it? we committed it? to it. No, we committed to it. And then we realized that you couldn't, uh, you can't stream it. So we were just oh. like heartbroken over it, but we'd already been like, we're going to do this. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it just ended up being this thing that people were trying to embarrass me with. And then it became, uh, your brand, for some reason it became some affectionate thing within our community <laughs> where it's just, uh, it's, it's this playful. I love you thing now. Yeah. And it's like, it's saying, I love you is weird, but saying glove glove for some reason is funny. It's completely fine. Yeah. And so, so it's become that and it's just, uh, it's, it's, I know it would have been a good stream, uh, and so, yeah, it was, uh, that's, it's, that's kind of that. It's funny that's, how that's those things work, thing. huh? Yeah. How, <laughs> how things organically unfold into things that you yeah. would never expect. And they, there's a certain, there's a certain, happen. yeah, there's a certain beauty to that. There's a certain beauty into, into not manufacturing things and just letting them go however yeah. they would. And you, you would never get there otherwise. Like, I don't think if uh -huh. I told you, Hey, I need you to glub glub incorporate that into your stream i don't think that would work very no, well and it's it's and it's such a it makes it so just so fun you know mm -hmm. like so yeah that's that's kind of how that came about and it's really stupid and uh and and i've learned i don't know over the course of the four years i've been streaming i've basically learned once people want to do something you just kind of let them do it yeah as didn't. long as it's not as long as it's not like destructive mm -hmm. you just let them do it and you embrace it and make it fun because people just want to have fun man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what that's what the internet's for the internet's for fun yeah i think i think uh I think if we were able to accentuate that part of it more, it would be a very good thing. The yeah. the beauty that can come from spontaneity through connection. I I, I think that's one of the best things out about about the internet. Um, okay, so we've gone for a while. What we'll do here is we'll wrap up, if that's okay with you. Um, yeah, that's fine. So I I don't have my chat open. I don't know how you manage to hold a conversation, play a game, and also read chat without getting distracted. I have to focus on one thing at a time. Um, to be fair, my game has five colors. You said it was very complex. So, <laughs> what what we what we can do here is, um, well, one, if you if your chat has any questions or my chat has any questions, ask them now. We'll give you, let's say, four or five yeah. minutes, and then either Jared or I or both can answer them. Jared, if you have any questions for me, uh, you you can let me know. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, we'll give it the three minutes and then we'll wrap up. Yeah. How's that sound? That sounds perfect to me. Sounds perfect. Okay. You got yeah, anything? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to scan my chat real quick with my yeah, old, you old guys, man eyes. You guys eyes. in chat heard that. Yeah, it is turn-based. That does help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if anybody has any questions, you, you heard the man. Uh, uh, I think we're good here. It's always interesting. People always ask me questions at the wrong time, but then when it's the right <laughs> time, it's like it's never, it's, it's never going to... They're never, it's like the back, same thing with backseating. You know how people will backseat you all day, but then you're, you're like, okay, I actually need help. Then there's just silence. Um, it's, a, it's a funny thing. I'm being asked why I'm so small. I, I don't know if you know this, but uh, I lied for several years about my height on the internet. I thought it was a funny joke. Yeah. Truth is I'm, I'm very small. Yeah, Do I don't know if you know that. Do you know that? I did, yeah. Yeah. I, okay. Uh, you knew I was small. Okay. I, okay, I did a hundred percent. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> uh, people think I, I'm not sure how many people still think it, but people thought I was five, two for a while. Like very, very small. <laughs> five, two is pretty small. Five, two is pretty small. Yeah. For a guy. Mm. Uh, oh yeah. Gamma. If you want to see Gamma, if you want to see the Kickstarter, if you do a uh, exclamation reload, it'll just give you a link in chat, dude. You are five, two. Squall is actually seven, one. I've met him. Dude, that's big. Squilla might be actually be coming to to visit soon. Ooh. 
Yeah, that's cool. Okay, well, you know what? You guys suck with questions. So why don't you do you do you have any questions for me? No, I don't. I, I I just want to thank you, man. Thank you for I I really enjoy sitting down with you. Like it's it's always a cool thing for me. Like, um, again, like it's it's one of these funny things, right? Like I uh, I I always I I emphasize like the idea of of people who who I'm like legitimately a fan of in my life. Mm. Uh, so many of them have become, you know, friends of mine. Uh, and, and I still have this level of, uh, of, of fandom for people. And so, you know, I have like these guys that, that make games that I'm fans of. And, 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 and it's funny because you, for me are one of these guys where I'm, I'm just legitimately a fan, dude. Like, oh, like you, we man. become friends, but I'm, I like you, I, I, you know, I watched you, I enjoyed you. I, I was there for the whole ride of everything. And, uh, and I'm, I'm legitimately, I'm legitimately just a, a fan of of you, man. Thank like, you. So so you know. Yeah, thank you very much. No, I appreciate that. That's great. No, I'll say the same thing. It was uh, with Twitch. There's like, well, there's a lot of there's a lot with everything. There's a lot of bad and good that comes from it. But with Twitch specifically, I am very very glad that you decided to to be a streamer on the platform because I I 100 percent think that you represent or embody a bunch of good things that Thanks, are man. not necessarily found on the platform when you don't have to. And I'm glad we met. Cause I think, I think uh, this is usually the story at the beginning. You're like, Oh, I don't know if I like him very much. Um, yeah. And yeah, we yeah. talked you about this. Really funny? Yeah. I, my affections for you have grown so much. I forgot that I used to not like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, no. that's actually really funny to me. That's uh, I, could, I 100% forgot, forgot that that's how I felt about you. Oh really? Like just, yeah. 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 It's not even, it's not even in there anymore. That's so funny. Holy that's, crap. Yeah. That's well, that's good. Um, but no, I am grateful to know you. I think you're a great person. I think you're very respectable. Thanks. I think you have a lot of good characteristics to you. You actually have character. You. And, you know, regardless of Twitch or not, I'm glad to have met you and I'm glad you're in my life. Dude. No, thank you. Thank yeah, you very yeah, much. of course. So, um, well, from here, what we can do is we can we can end it, but we can always talk again. And I know you're very yeah, busy. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's tons of questions I always well, have for you. Well, I mean, you. To, you know, I can always do stuff like this because people like, people like this game. Uh, yeah, apparently for some, i mean <laughs> for some for some for whatever reason. reason yeah this no it's a freaking good game dude. I, be I bet it is um it, i'm gonna win it man yeah. i'm tired of maybe I'm tired of these next doubters. time yeah okay well then how about we do that maybe in a couple months we'll catch up again yeah, let's go. Um, absolutely as always if there's any questions that um anyone had for myself or jared ask me or send them to me and i'll ask next time we could also talk yeah. about stuff that you want to talk about or anything that you want to talk about let me know i always say this to anybody who comes on um other than that that was cool thanks for talking to me man dude no thank you thank you seriously thank you thank you thank you